Oaky, Doki Smokey. Don't call me Smokey. Smokey the Bob. There used to be that. You know what I just thought of? There was an old country singer. You remember Smokey the Bear? And yeah, the Smokey the Bear. Right. But there was a, there was an old timey country singer that had a song called Smokey the Bar. B A R. I'm trying. I don't know why that came to my mind, but it was. I can. I lived in another state for a while where that type of music was popular. Only you can prevent forest fires. Only you. Well, there we are, and we'll we'll um, we shall greet each other. Greetings, greetings, Patrick. Now, uh, everybody knows I'm in South Jersey, across the river from the city of Philadelphia, southern New Jersey, the lovely Delaware Valley. Exactly where you're you're in the Chicago area. I'm uh, actually about a, about an hour west of the city. So I'm in suburban Chicago, about 35 miles due west. So I just hop on the interstate, head straight in the city, and I can hit the lake. Okay, very good. And now the question is, what lake do I hit? One of the big ones. There you go. That's all you need to know. Your geography lesson of the day, we are on Lake Michigan. So A Lake Michigan. But we do not we do not have the Jersey Shore lifestyle that you have down, you know, with with your water. Every time I uh, when I travel into Iowa, I travel across the Mississippi River. And I'm, that's the what I think of. I, I usually send Scott a picture. I'm like, oh, look, my Jersey Shore. And I'm crossing the Mississippi River. That's as close as we get. Even though we have beaches on Lake Michigan, it's not the same. But you can swim. The lakes are warm enough. And absolutely no jellyfish, nothing weird in the lakes. So. Oh, jellyfish. Nothing better than being a kid and trying to swim away from those doggone jellyfish. We got stung, but we swam anyway. My daughter was younger. We lived in, in uh, Maryland for two years uh, outside of D.C. Okay. and off the not too far away from the Chesapeake Bay. And it became this measuring component where as the warm months came in, I can't remember what they were called, but they were like the certain type of jellyfish. And it took them a good chunk of the summer to make their way up into the Chesapeake Bay. So you could actually uh, swim in the Chesapeake Bay without risk of these early on. But as it progressed, if you were too south in the bay, you would, I, were they nettles or something like that? I don't know. I, I've been too long since I've lived there, but I'm, I'm from like Michigan country. I'm like, what, what? there's jellyfish in the Chesapeake Bay. What? That, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> they're like, well, it's the oceans right there. So that's what happens. Yeah. They, 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 and I, it's strangely enough, I hadn't seen them in a while and I hadn't seen jellyfish until last, I saw quite a few of them last summer at certain times, but it's just one of those things you it's, they can come and go with tides and storms and weather and you'll see them and then you won't see them. Um, they were never, when you got stung by them, you didn't know you were stung until maybe 30 minutes after you were stung. And then you had this like stinging rash and I don't know, we still got, we still swam. I mean, yep. we weren't ever. So we're generation X. Yeah. We, you get stung by jellyfish. Oh, who cares? Keep swimming. <laughs> Keep swimming. Yeah. Oh, I, I, no, keep swimming. Yeah. Well, anyway, listen, we want to say how, say hello to everyone. I don't know, but whether Patrick can see who's here. Are you able to see what's going on? Uh, yes, I, that's why I keep okay. looking down and I've got my cheaters okay. on and I, I can follow along in the chat on my phone. Good, good, good. I need you to do that because then that way, um, what I don't see, you see, <laughs> you'll probably see more than I will. Um, it is the last Monday night of the month, and we have um, Karen uh, Williams. I see you, and you see me. And earlier today, you were kind enough to volunteer to call the shots. Would you still be uh, willing to do that? Because my laptop is dead. I ran over the uh, charger with my vacuum cleaner. Not supposed to do that. She says yes. So then I shall, I shall wrench you. I shall give you a blue wrench if you'll hold on just a minute. So anyway, I had to go out and you know, you go out and you buy a new charger and they're like 80 bucks for a stupid charger. So I'm, uh, this is an extension cord, but they know they've got you. They know. Yep. Can't live without it. They know. 
that they've got you. Let me go back in here. Uh, pardon me for just a moment. Patrick, do something uh, entertaining while I... Well, I was just... Uh, so Wordsmith57, I'm not familiar with, but that individual said born in, D born in D.C., grew up in northern Chesapeake Bay. So I was in southern Maryland, and um, I guess uh, northern Chesapeake Bay puts you basically in the Baltimore area. So I don't know if they ever got that far north at these little nettles or if anyone even knows what I was talking about. Somebody said they hated hated jellyfish. Don't know too many people that would say they love jellyfish. Although that, you know, that could be an interesting love. Um, um, so Karen said she will do starts and stops. You guys call the winner. Um, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm unsuccessfully trying to do something. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, Karen, well, thank you for doing that. I can't, I'm not going to be able to on StreamYard at the moment. Get away. Yeah, okay. if you're trying to wrench her, you'll probably need to do it on yep. your phone. And I don't think I, I can't do it yep. on your path. It's fine. We, we'll plow ahead anyway. <laughs> we don't, we can see what's going on and we won't need, we'll both watch. So we'll still do, um, Karen, for, for your benefit, you, you probably do not need us to do this because you're going to naturally see the lag. You're right. in another state, but I'm still just for you. I'm going to give you the five, four, three, two, one. So what will happen is, uh, even though we really don't need to do that when Karen sees or hears five, four, three, two, one, she will put in stop. Poet Vic was complimenting my, my pottery collection. So I was just kind of scrolling a little bit. Go right. Me. Do it, do it. Okay. My pride and joy along with my piano behind me. It makes it, this is actually my Zoom background backdrop for work too, so it's always a nice icebreaker. People are like, "Oh my God, what's behind you? Is that a picture?" Nope, that'd be mine. You, you know, I live with antiques. You know, I want to rip off some Scott Joplin on that quarter sawn oak. Yeah, <clears throat> it's beautiful. And everyone's I, like, "Oh, do you play?" I'm like, I can pluck out no, I can pluck out tunes, but it is the piano that my daughter learned to play piano on. We bought it when we bought the house and she took piano lessons in the house because when you learn to play on a 100 year old vertical grand, it's a little different than playing on a Kawasaki uh, keyboard. So oh, absolutely, they came to the house and she, and so when she plays in front of a regular piano, which she, she's, like, she's not a pianist or anything, but when she plays in, she is way too much power because she's used to what she needs to do here and she doesn't really need to follow through when she goes into more modern instruments. Yes, one of the it's that, that's it's interesting because that's that's one of the reasons why many organists do not like going from the organ to the piano. Uh, it because of touch. Yeah. So anyway, okay. Tonight we're having an ephemera, ephemera slash um linens linens and things kind of sale and you We've blame me on that like what do those two have to do with each other not much <laughs> but we were debating what we were going to do and it became both so well you tell us what you guys like more do you like old paper do you like i and i'm going to stretch the definition of ephemera a little bit uh but then we also have some uh, interesting textiles linens that we can cover as well okay. so so we'll go back and forth and um, we'll start showing you some things. And if you're, if you want us to be hot and heavy with the linens, let us know if you're more on the ephemera side. And we want to thank everybody for joining us tonight, whether you purchase or not. This is a live sale. Patrick will ship from suburban Chicago. From Chicago. So center of the center of the country. So typically shipping is not particularly expensive. Right. And really nothing I have is going to be particularly heavy. So. Okay. I ship from Southern New Jersey. We both use pirate ship. We cannot combine orders because we're 500 miles apart, something like that. So um, offer ups mean we will hold up an item such as this lovely Czechoslovakian table linen, which you'll see later on. And uh, we'll, we'll say we start at $15 and people will put their, their, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18. We count it down. The highest bid gets it. And then we will send you your invoice. Um, I'll send mine out tomorrow. I implore, I entreat my dear friends, please, 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 please. If you're new to me and I love it, love it, love it. Okay. 
I really do. But I've had a well, if you're new, go ahead and bid. I love it, love it, love it. But when you email me, please double, 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 triple check. I've had a lot of, you know, and I'm not annoyed at it. Things happen. But people will forget certain things and then it delays you getting your things. It delay it. We go back and forth. We can go back and forth for days and not really connect. So I speak for both Patrick and myself. If you're new to us, Patrick has his email right there. I have to stick mine on uh, in here, but we've got to know your real name. For instance, now I don't want to talk too much, but folks don't understand this. Let's say you're out there chatting and your online persona is Hotsy Totsy Miss Congeniality 1932. Okay, you win something and you write to me and, you know, your real name is Gladys Kravitz. I'm going to write back and say, Gladys, I have no idea who you are. You didn't win anything, right? I don't know that you are Miss Hotsy Totsy Congeniality 1932. Was that it? I didn't think you got it right. I was going to, I would say I'm impressed. Well, don't be. <laughs> so who are you? What did you win? What's your address? So we can mail it to you. What's your real name? <laughs> I'll get to that, Nicole. What payments do you accept? I'll let uh, Patrick do that. Um, and then also, please, if you don't have PayPal, you've got to tell us. Because if you don't, we will send you an invoice through PayPal and you'll never get it. And then you get mad and you'll come on TV and you'll say, Scott, I wrote to you and you never answered me. <laughs> it's because we didn't connect. So I have we have to know if you have PayPal or not. If you don't, I don't know why I'm doing all this with my hands. <laughs> if you don't have, I haven't been rehearsing. If you don't have PayPal, tell us and we can send you an invoice. Now, Patrick, you talk a little bit about the email addresses that we need, how we match PayPal up and maybe some shipping and so I do, I as well will use PayPal, but you yes. do not have to be a PayPal member or you, don't, you do not have to register with PayPal in order to pay a PayPal invoice. So what will end up happening is just as Scott said, if you are within PayPal, when we send it via PayPal, it's a little, theoretically, it's a little bit simpler, a little bit more straightforward, streamlined that you would receive the invoice. You could have payments set up and you could pay the invoice more quickly. That is secondary to the fact that you can pay it however you want. The downside ends up being is if you don't have an email address registered with PayPal, we'll still type it in, but it's trying to send it to you as a PayPal customer. What it may, normally means it just, it'll end up getting it, probably it'll go into your spam. And so depending on how often you check your spam filter or how your spam filters are set up, you may or may not ever receive it. If you tell us that you do not have PayPal or you do not like using PayPal, I will say I will still be invoicing you via PayPal because that's how I do all my bookkeeping and taxes and everything at the end of the year. But what we do differently is I will send you an email directly to whatever email address you give me and I will just give you a link. So then when you receive the email, you just click on that link. It will take you into the way to pay it and you can just enter a credit card, whatever you want to do. You do not need to register. Even though PayPal may ask you to, you do not need to set up an account. It is completely optional. Uh, but I just like it. And and Scott was giving the thumbs up as well from a tax purposes, from a tracking purposes. It's nice to have it all in one place. Uh, so that is why we do it. I've had requests, you know, some people, oh, I'll okay, give you a money order. I don't know if I'd recognize a money order if it showed up, but no. Yeah, we got at some point, there's just certain ways. Got to be able to move things, move things along. Uh, but we'll always work with you. And I will say it will take me a couple of days. For those who are not familiar with me, it will take me a couple of days to get invoices out because this is a side hustle for me. I have a full-time job, uh, but I will try and get invoices out within the last next couple of nights. If you don't hear from me, send me another email. You know, if, if you think, oh, Patrick should have said something by now, just send me an email and maybe I did send it to you and it went to spam. Or maybe you're really jonesing for what you want and I just haven't had a chance to send yeah. it to you. Reach out again. Don't go on, you know, go into social media. I can't believe I bought this from Patrick and Patrick never contacted me. If I don't get yeah, your first email, I don't know who you are. Right. A lot of people don't realize yeah. we can't reach out to you via YouTube. So oh, right. see, I'm not going to know it. Miss Congeniality something 1932. 
Hotsy Totsy, Miss Congeniality, 1932. I think that's what it was. Um, I can't go into YouTube and find you and try and communicate with you that way. So unless yeah. you send an email to this email address on the screen for the first time, I'm not going to know how to send you an invoice in any way. Right. Right. And uh, someone asked, but it went, it went, it went by. Um, okay, yes. so I need to say something because a couple. Someone said, "Are we moving on?" Somebody said, "Let's go." Hold on, folks. All right, we have a lot we need to talk about because we often we we have to talk about this because we get the you know everyone who wants us to get on and get into the sale we will, but we've got to discuss this because. It does become problematic when we can't communicate back to back. So Rosemary, hold tight. Okay, I see you on that. Rosemary says, "Come on, let's go." But you need to hold on, Rosemary, and understand that this is there's a lot that people just don't understand with this. Okay, so you may understand, Rosemary, but there's a learning curve for a lot of new folks. So you're good, Rosemary, but just be patient. We're all here to have fun. And I'm the newbies. So people don't know. Well, I'm not new. I've been doing this a while, be too. Be patient. But people don't know who I am on this channel. And with 300 people, there's definitely people in this chat that did not right. know everything we just so shared. So you have to understand that um, you might want us to go ahead and jump into this, but there's an awful lot we need to, to say to make sure that everybody understands how this works. You get frustrated when you can't reach us. We get frustrated when we can't reach you. And it is pretty simple. I know Rosemary is laughing out loud. I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to sell too, Rosemary. We love you. But um, just keep in mind that there's a lot more to this than you guys might think. And I might also point out, and I would like everybody to know, that I too have a full-time job. And it is what I do, this. And so I work uh, at this more hours than I used to when I was back in my quote unquote nine to five. So anyway, just having said that, Patrick, the floor is yours. Go for it. All right. I get, should I make you big? I should. I'm always big. Well, there you go. Still trying to lose weight. <laughs> Do it. All right. I'm stretching the initial definition of ephemera for my first item because ephemera you know, as the name implies, is ephemeral, things that are not designed to be around for a long time. And LPs, you know, typically they would be sticking around, but they are still made of paper. Uh, but I'm sharing this because although some people might want to play the LPs that are in here, I picked these up specifically for the for the art. And what I've got, even though it's February, I total strong believer in, hey, you see something that you like, you pick it up and you hold on to it till the next holiday. I have a set of three LPs, all for children's Christmas. So we've got Santa Claus is coming to town. It is the Peter Pan uh, album. And so you've got the artwork on the front. You may have artwork on the back. These look fantastic, you know, hanging on the walls in a vignette. They're nice and big in the background. You can put some children's books in front of them. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer on the back of some of their other albums. And then, of course, Frosty. And it's cool that these actually have both art on the front and if you want to mix things up part way through the season you can show the art from the back so i'm going to sell these as a set it is going to be a ten dollar start so you get all three of these there's not a choice you get all three of these for 10 bucks and we will see if anyone is looking to add christmas in february almost march uh, and pr prepare. Oh, actually, you know, frosty. You could even try and put out. Depending, although we hit seventy degrees today, I don't think we've got a lot of snow going on. Wow. Um, but uh, you could even do some last-minute winter displays, should you be so inclined. The, were, did you listen to these, Scott, as a kid? Got the hey. wonder, the Wonderland records. I can't oh, say sure. I can't really remember the records, but definitely the songs. Yeah, they look very familiar. Yeah, that artwork, the minute I saw them, I'm like, this is just the kind of artwork that, you know, that whole vintage, kitschy, like we all remember our childhood in some way that um, these just look absolutely fantastic. You can, you know, nestle them into the into the tree or under the tree. There's just so many different ways to decorate with these. And they all have the album in there. I do not have a way of playing them, so I cannot swear that uh, what condition they are. Oddly, this one's heavier than the others. I don't know much about pressings. I don't have Katie from Vidges and Vinyl to know uh, the difference between all the pressings, but that one just seems heavier. But they all have, the record is in 
intact. And I don't see any uh, takers. So I will. You do. You have a bid. Val M has placed. Oh, yep. Yep. I just, saw, I just saw Val come through. So we got Val coming in. Um, so I will go ahead and do a quick uh, countdown on okay. these. Um, I guess we are going to do the numbers. So five, four, three, two, one, zero. Oh, Patsy came in at 11. So we'll see. Patrick, if let me, can I just jump you? I'm sorry. Absolutely. Uh, start from 10. Oh, 10. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not confused. So just go ahead and do 10. I just put my hands up for, well, Karen already put the stop in. I guess we're okay. Unless anybody else wants us to keep it going. We can yeah, I, do. I don't typically do offer ups on my channel. So this is a newer thing to me. So I should have asked for clarification. Okay. No worries. But yes, yeah, so it looks like I got to put my cheaters back on. I'm in that weird eye thing where I've got to put my glasses on. Yeah. Um, it looks like it is Patsy M for $11. So thank you, Patsy M. We got a great deal. And these, if you didn't know, can go media mail. So they won't even be that expensive to ship. Excellent. Good. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll continue now with the sort of Christmas in February theme. Uh, this is from 1932, and it's a tiny little sheet music book here from 1932. $5, it's an excellent condition, and this is an offer up, but we're going to start just at $5 on this. And so we've got familiar Christmas carols, easy arrangements for piano solo with words, and ad lib. Okay, so it was $0.35 cents when it was purchased initially. Sheet music here from 1932, and this is what you will get. Angels from the realms of glory. Away in a manger, the first, no the first Noel. God rest you, merry gentlemen. Hark the herald angels sing. It came upon a midnight clear. Joy to the world. Oh, come on, you faithful. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht, also known as Silent Night, Holy Night. And we three kings, you can see that this is easy. Melody in the right hand in the treble clef, uh, one note bass in the uh, bass clef. And so it's in good condition. It does not smell. And what's the copyright on that? 1932. How 32. Char how charming. Elizabeth at $5. Yeah, okay. So charming. There's no pictures or anything. It's just charming. I like the front, the little, just typical um, sheet music of that era. So 1932 Christmas. Even if you don't poke away at it, this would look nice. Just propped up on the old piano. Dust off that old piano. Sparkle and Munge is highlighting the fact that we are doing Christmas and Lent. It's a whole new thing. Christmas and Lent. Christmas and Lent. We're not doing Christmas in July. We're doing Christmas and Lent. All right. So the, so the high bid right now is $6. This can go media mail as well. And I will count it down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Karen will be putting the stop in. I shall bring Patrick back. Uh, we'll go back here and then we'll we'll write down what are some of the songs. Ooh, hit refresh, Lynn Mars. I did read off all the songs. There's a little bit of a lag there where you are. And I see Karen Williams has put the stop in and it might be Patsy M at 12. I'm gonna wait and let you confirm that. Everybody make sure you're in live chat or whatever. They change things all the time. Yeah. Um, so we'll just wait. I'll keep my eye on the screen, but I will go ahead. It's very good. Patsy M for 12. Patsy at 12, thank you so much and We'll turn it over to Patrick Solo Layout. Go for it. And thank, thank you for doing this, Karen. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Karen. All right. So my next item, we are expanding, once again, the definition of ephemera. Trust me, I sell paper all the time, so I always try and mix things up. Uh, but again, ephemera is ephemeral. And so this is uh, somewhat of a pop quiz uh, for people that may not even know what these are. So what I've got, this is going to be a, a $20 start. And what you are getting for this is... First, these are tobacco tags. So each one of these is a small metal tag that is vintage advertising. And in all of these cases, it's actually antique advertising because all of these are going to be prior to the 1920s. These would have been sold 
Uh, what they would have been used for is when tobacco was pressed into a little block, there was different ways that you could sell loose tobacco. One of the ways is you'd sell it, you'd compress it down. You just use all this pressure, pressure it down. And you create this little, could be a little block, could be a big block. First, you would press it behind this metal dish or this metal plate. So this would go, you put all this into a mold, you push down on the top and in the top of that little brownie that you created of tobacco, the tobacco plug. So if people have heard about plugs, you would have this little Brown's mule, which was the brand of that tobacco. And you can see there's all of these are on here because the size of this tobacco plug was basically about the size of this little, um, this little design right here. So you press all of those in, then those would end up getting wrapped up. What they would also sometimes do, and sometimes in combination, they would then hammer these little discs into them as well. You could also do twists. Uh, so there's just tobacco tags. I did a video on them on my channel. You could go hunting for them. Uh, tobacco tags is a collector item. You can see there's these little prongs in them. They would bend those prongs down and then they would be hammered those and they would go into the little, uh, you know, just like Philip said, it looks just like a brownie. You would hammer it in the top of the brownie. Sometimes it was done as a twist and it was marked and it was an advertising. It was so that when you then went to the tobacco store or the general store and you had to get your tobacco, you could make sure that you were getting an actual branded piece because that was what the manufacturer did. So what I've done is I've taken the, uh, this is actually a quarter of a full size sheet. That's how I bought it. You get, you get the mold for Brown's mule. I have three tobacco tags. So I've got Taylor made. I've got uh, black Maria. And then I also have bird in hand. So those are all brands of tobaccos. I then put them on little rare earth magnets. Didn't want to glue them on because I don't want to ruin the actual tag. And then I'm going to give you a little tobacco label. So Pike smoking tobacco. You're going to get one of those two. So you've got like a little instant display. And what you have is a little message board that you've got that nobody else is going to have. You are going to have three unique tobacco tags. You've got the <laughs> tobacco label and the tobacco board. What I'm sorry. What? What are, you, what are we chuckling at? I'm sorry. You're fine. You do have a bid. I'm, I'm chuckling at Laurie Ishmael, who says, you're not the same guy. What's up with that? I've taken over his channel. I, th I, I believe you don't realize <laughs> that there are two of us broadcasting tonight. That's okay. I'm here. You enjoy Patrick for a minute. Okay. That's yep, Patrick, no. you do have a bid. You do have a bid. So that's that's great. So this is what you're getting. You're getting a <laughs> unique piece. The board, put this up on the easel, attach it to your wall. You've got a little note board that you can use. And uh, no one else is going to have a little mess at memo center like you. So we're going to go ahead and do the countdown. I will start it at 10 as instructed by the master. So we got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, four, three, two, and one. And you said we had uh, a bid and I don't know if anyone else came up. So it looks like this is going to probably go to Melody. We will verify that with what Karen says. And that's what I love. You know, I started watching Scott before I even started my channel. I like the education. I like teaching people about things they've never seen. I have a collection of these uh, tobacco tags myself and they're done just like this. They're fun. They're interesting. I have them literally in my powder room. So when people come, like, oh, what are those? And we can sit there and I can bore them about tobacco. And I don't even smoke. So, all right. And it is Melody. So thanks so much, Melody. I haven't shipped you in a while. So just make sure you send me your information again to make sure I've got your most up to date and pass it over to Scott. All righty then. Thank you so much. That was unique and exciting. And I've got for you now a collection of uh, 23 greetings cards 23 you get all 23 of them and you're going to see them in just a second but we're going to start out at 15 dollars. now that means you get all 30 oh, i'm sorry all 23 they're birthday cards mostly from the 40s and 50s and i will show them to you 15 dollars is where we're starting thanks for putting that in karen karen put in that we're starting at 15 dollars. 23 birthday cards. I'm going to stand up 
For the sake of time, I'm not going to be opening these. They're in good condition, they are used, and so somebody wrote in there. The countdown was still going on and the stop was there and I have refresh poppers. Um, hello? Yeah, I, th I think that's def there's definitely been a, a bigger lag with YouTube lately, I've noticed. So I think that's just gonna happen. So don't wait to the last minute. And that, it's right. going to be harder to uh, steal. We've talked about that. If you're waiting for, it's a, keep in mind that lag. You might want to put your best bid in, you know, before we start counting. It's just the nature of the game, but that's just kind of the way it works. Okay. So and let's Bobby's look at in at 20. All right. Let's look at all these quickly. Aren't these cute little piggy, piggy, pig? This one is flocked with a little lamb. I'm going to try to hold them still, but you know how I move. If you I know. remember days of flocked cards. Indeed. Little fuzzy, little fuzzy, fuzzy wuzzies. All right. This one is flocked as well. That's for the little one-year-old. I'll just open up one. just to, So they're all signed. And this one, who sent this one? Oh, Grandma sent that one. Mm -hmm. Bless our grandmothers who always sent us cards. When I was in college, my grandmother would write letters to me and she would include $5 and she'd say, go have a pizza. That lets you know how long ago I was in college when you could actually go out and get a pizza for five bucks. Do you remember the coin cards as a kid? Oh, they're, they're like little yes. skis, like It's like all these nickels or quarters or dimes. Yes, that was something that our grandfather used to do. Look at the kitties. These these little birthday cards. Very 1940s and 50s. You know, they're in good shape. This one is from Betty and Aunt Fl from Betty, Aunt Florence, and Uncle Bill. Oh, doesn't everybody want a Betty and an Aunt Florence and an Uncle Bill? <laughs> well, I, I I actually have all of them. I don't have a Betty in the family. I have I have an Aunt Betty. I don't think I have the others. Well, I've got an Uncle Bill. That's my mother's brother. Uh, so we're looking at these cutie. There's a big stack. And, yeah, I think we, get, and I think we still only have the 20 bucks. Oh, come on. It's You're going to get 23 of these cute little birthday cards. This one has a piece of... This looks like little Lulu. Sort of like little Lulu almost, doesn't it? A little bit? Yeah. Little Lulu. This one might not be culturally appropriate these days, but times have changed and we, you know, little ballerinas. And she's actually glued. No, I thought she did something. She doesn't, she's not articulate or she doesn't articulate. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm trying to do. Yeah, she has papers. Or no, she's not yeah, articulate. She's, she's, she's dimensional. Yeah. Oh, there's old King Cole, I think. Yes, old King Cole. I don't know why I did it. I don't know why I had to do it with that kind of a accent. But I guess I was channeling Helmut Kohl. I don't know why I'm thinking yeah. of that. German prime minister from what, 20 years ago? Uh, of course, only, you know, don't you all remember Helmut Kohl, the wonderful German prime minister from, I don't know, how long ago? Okay, anyway. And then there's the goose. The mother goose or whatever it is. Well, that's a whole story. This kid gets a whole book. Oh, my word. That, the kid was, got the deluxe. That would okay. carry the frame. It would. 23 birthday cards from the 19, oh, the 50s, 40s and 50s. And we might only have that one bid. Uh, I can't highlight it because it went by. So I trust that. It's in there somewhere, whatever that bid was. It looks like right now Regina Rainey has the high bid at 25, and we're going to count them down. So if you're interested, place your bid. I don't want you to lose out. Oh, wait a minute. Before I count it down on the back, this says, from your fancy man. Oh. From your fancy man. I'm going to just 10, <laughs> 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one. From your fancy man. Not your plain and simple one, but your fancy one. 
Fancy I'm man send, sending the mother goose card. I apologize. My chair does make a lot of noise. All of my furniture here makes noise. We all do as we get older. Oh, I'm a whole symphony orchestra in the morning when I first get up. <laughs> all right. So okay. I see the stop from Karen. Mm-hmm. You like that KP, the fancy man? Mm -hmm. Fancy schmancy, Bonnie. I do need to go ahead and have someone place in there who we uh, have as our winner. And it's yep. Regina. Regina for 25. Is it just Regina? There's more to the name. What else goes with the Regina? It was Regina Rainey, R A N E Y. Got it, Regina. And I know you. I've got your info. So <clears throat> you are good. Solo layout. Okay. All right. Good. So I will hop over to my first textile. So what I've got is massive. And so this is going to start at $20. And what this is, is a 10 foot long. And yes, I did measure it twice because somebody asked me when I posted this on Instagram. It is 10 feet long and five and a half feet wide. If I can back up enough how much you can get into the picture. It has the cutout. I was I was thinking it was Battenberg lace, so then I had to go Google what Battenberg lace was, and this is not Battenberg lace. This is cut work. Speaking of Colmet Helm, Colmet uh, Schmidt. <laughs> this is cut work where the stitching was done, and then the fabric was cut away to create this open design. So you've got a scalloped border on all four edges. And again, this is a $20 start. I think Karen put that in there. It is scalped on all four sides. Within each design, the cut, the there's the fabric that holds it together so it doesn't all come apart. But then there's just these little embellishments of thread, white thread, that's kind of given this little leaf. There's like this little three dot piece that kind of runs all along on the side. It is 10 feet long by five and a half feet wide. And I've seen tablecloths like this before and not usually this big, but they're, you know, pretty standard size. So you can see from the corner, it goes all the way in to the middle. They want measurements again, Patrick. 10 foot by five and a half. Mm -hmm. But then when you go into the middle, what's different about this one, and hopefully you can see it, the middle is sheer. So you can kind of tell that you can't really see anything through the regular whiteness of the tablecloth till you get into the middle. And then there's this large rectangular section, which is also stitched. So it's got these roses stitched into it, but you can see it's sheer just in the middle. So if you've got a really pretty graining in your, in your wood table, you'd be able to see it through the cutaway, but you'd also be able to see it a little bit through this sheer panel that's in the middle. And I've never seen that sheer panel before. Have you seen that before, Scott? I'm not very conversant with tablecloths, I must confess. So hopefully you can kind of tell what I'm talking about on that case. So you've got, if you've got an Easter dinner party coming up and you've got a dining table that you're stringing together a bunch of two by fours to make a massive table, here's how you can hide it. And you've got an absolutely gorgeous tablecloth. Um, so it's great to be able to try and sell it here because even though I do have a booth, it's difficult to put fabrics in my, in an antique booth because then people want to unfold it and do all this other stuff. So you're being asked if it is linen. I do not believe it is linen. Um, it is, it has a weave to it. So you can see it. There are no labels on it. So there's so no indication i would say it is cotton and i would say it was probably popular in the 50s or 60s like that would be probably be the age of this it is definitely machine done all of this is done by machine not by hand so we're not getting into a true antique uh lace tablecloth uh, but that's why i'm giving rid of it because it's not going to fit my table it's i do not have a table in a house by myself that's going to hold a 10 foot long uh table so uh, i started at 20 i don't think actually any um 
bids came in for it. So I don't think there's a need to cut it down. Um, and so Adam said, yes, cut work was usually done with cotton. So, and I would, I would, uh, I would uh, underscore that. Patrick, you have bids. I do see Jan Marie with 30. Thank you so much. So I will go ahead and do the countdown. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we will do the stop. And as big as it is, it's not very heavy, so it will not take much to uh, ship this out. And I'm glad that some people are interested in it. I really wanted this to get, go to a good home. So we will see where the where the, what the final one comes in. If Karen can, uh, it looks like a bunch of people came in at the, at the same time on mine. Yeah. So if Karen can clarify. It appears as though it may be Philip Lane at 38, but we'll wait and just make sure. Jan Marie, I think just missed it by a couple bucks. And it does look as though it's uh, Philip Lane, L-A-Y-N-E, Patrick, okay. 38. And I'll leave that on the screen for a second for you. Give you a chance to write it down. Thank you. I know how that is. And while Patrick is writing that down, I want to thank all 351 people that we've got here tonight on a Monday night. I hope everyone is enjoying their evening. Um Boy, I'll tell you, we got up to 60 degrees in old South Jersey today. It was lovely. And um, we're sending more your way from Chicago. It hit 70 for us today. So you should have oh another good day tomorrow. Word. I'm telling you what, that beach chair gets to come out earlier and earlier and earlier each year. Oh, wonderful. Philip says that's great, Philip. Wonderful. Great, 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 great. Pretty. And it looks like it's in great condition, too. It Perfect. really is. I, I pressed all my linens, and that one I will admit was a little hard because it was so big, but uh, I got a chance to make sure that all the cut work was all still in really good condition. So, yeah, you, you got a good piece coming. Oh, 90. Yeah. That's too early to be hitting 90. <laughs> it be 90 degrees in February. I'm happy to hear that Patrick pressed all of his linens. I ran mine under the faucet and then rolled around with them in the backyard. <laughs> As you are about to see, we shall now shrink you, and I shall enlarge myself. And what I've got for you now is from the olden days of the 1920s. This is a beautiful table runner. We're starting at $30. Let me give you the measurements. I'm going to give you the measurements. Maybe someone could <laughs> type them down because I know you'll ask again. 30 um uh 61 by 13 that's right it's 61 inches long not including the fringe thank you patrick uh, by 13 inches in width and it is a beautiful rich velvet table runner let me stand up we start at 20 dollars on this i shall slide my chair out of the way and pardon I do believe my shirt tail is untucked. 61 by 30, I'm sorry, 61 by 13. Let's take a look at the edge of it first, which is uh, fringed. And I will show you the colors of it. Why don't we look at the drab backside first? These were machine made and when you go back to the days of the 1920s, interiors, as we know, had lots of rich fabrics. And this, golly, how am I going to get you to see the whole blasted thing? I guess I have to go way back here to show you that this is going to go on the back of a sofa table as a table runner. It can also go on top of your library table. Yeah, it's been a while since you sat in front of a library table, hasn't it, in antique oak. can also go on a dining room table or a buffet. And these were used. This one is sort of autumn colors, Patrick, if you can brown and It's brown. gorgeous. I love the color. Black and russet, I guess. 
Um, now, Adam is saying that that looks like, uh, and I've heard the term, but I don't know how to recognize it. He's saying, is that penne velvet? I don't, I, it's some type of a velvet. I, I, can't, I couldn't tell you, but it's the kind of, it's the, it, it is velvet. And it, it does not have stains on it, and it doesn't have rips on it. And it's the kind of thing that these, you know, everybody was decorated their homes with these. And these were, as I said, I've already gone through. Even on top, uh, top of bookshelves, I use these quite a bit in my own house here and there. And it's a wonderful way to protect the tops of tables and bookcases, but also decorative. It's absolutely gorgeous. So it does not have a funny smell. I shall smell it now live on the air. No, it just smells like a hundred year old piece of cloth. So and Adam is saying that penny, penny Velvet has a flatter nap so that it could be printed. So there's our education oh, for the evening. My knowledge of Penny Velvet is as limited to, it's a it's a term used in anti-mame. She pulls out, she asks to have her uh, oh. penny velvet dress pulled out. And if you're oh, going out, excellent. if you're going out for the evening or just, you know, sitting around staring at the cat is there a lining on the back of it or is that just the back of the velvet that is the back of it okay gotcha so there's no lining on it and i know there's some bids in there made by who knows uh there would have been a number of american companies i suppose that would have made this type of thing here in the u.s so i cannot tell you who the maker of it is that fringe is in great condition too the fringe is in good condition, unlike carpet, which would be ruined by vacuum cleaners and people stepping on it. Um, these do pretty well because they were simply left on tops uh, on the tops of tables. So I know there, there's a bit in here somewhere. Uh, there were a couple, I believe. Well, we'll go ahead and count it down. I... There was a question about whether you started at 20 or 30, but it did not matter because it went past that. Looks like the highest one now is Poodle at 40. Okay. It's interesting because Rosemary says is Turkish. Uh, interesting you should say that. We'll talk later about the uh, Turkish corner. <laughs> Patrick knows. We both know about Turkish corners, right? Um, you have to remember also that, that in the United States in the 1920s, Persian carpets were popular. Turkish corners were really getting out of style by then, but people decorated with all types of exotic things from the Orient, as they would have said at that time, places from the East, the Far East, the Middle East, all of these types of styles would have been popular in American homes in the after the Titanic era, sort of after the First World War into the 1920s. And then this kind of thing fades away, really, as we get into the 30s, tastes change, but Kells is asking for clarification about the edging color, if it's black, blue, or gray. Which, when you say the edging color, uh, this is black. Is, is the edge black, blue, or gray? It is black. Okay, so for me, it looked black, but as it goes into the, the sheen, it did kind of almost look blue. Right. So, good. And also, because of the age <laughs> of this, which is about 100 years old or close to it, we may have, um, I don't know if all of these dyes, certainly we don't have vegetable dyes here, but I, I can't really go back and tell you what whether, certainly this wouldn't be synthetic, but I, I don't really know what kind of, and then of course, it also when you get it into the light, as you brush it, you're going to get a little bit of a different I know my cat looked black, but when you pet him a funny way in the sunlight, he looked brown. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll Seventy dollars for a poodle. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Oops, three. I'm trying to do this. You can do it. One. I don't know where those balloons came from. I was going to say what happened. What triggered that? I, so, something is weird. We do weird things and stuff happen. Look, it just happened again. I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. All right. A bunch of things popped into the end. So Karen is going to have to really make sure who is the first one. And, and one night I did it and I made thumbs down. Come, I thumbed myself down. But. That is a beautiful piece. 
That'll add some richness to your interior next autumn. Let me slide back up here and bring Patrick back, and then I'll... So I see this stop from Karen, so I was getting her to okay. refresh. Poodle at 75. Congrats, Thanks. Poodle. Beautiful. Poodle, thank you. And I've got another running runner coming up, another beautiful one in red. That's coming up in just a minute as well. Poodle, thank you. Thank you, everyone who placed your bids. I appreciate that. And let's go back to Patrick. Yes, and Poodle was fighting fighting for that one. Briar Lee pointed that out. So, yes, glad you were able to squeak that out, Poodle. All right, my next going back to some ephemera. Um, this is a lot that I'm offering all the pieces together. So, again, not choice. You get the entire set. It's a $10 start. This would be for, you know, we've got spring picnics coming, summer picnics coming. We've got all these options of creating your own vintage menus. So these are all blank menu, menu blanks, $10 start for the entire lot. We've got a Coca-Cola menu blank. So this is probably 50s, 60s. Um, you know, this is going to be a little bit later. We've got a menu blank for Budweiser. So you can put this, you know, you can put, if you got a man cave or a she shed, uh, you could frame this up. You could put your name on there. You could put what's available and put it up on the bar. Now this one, somebody did use this because it looks like they were, I don't know, scoring something. I'm not sure what was keeping track, but no, don't, oh no, this, we've got, a, we've got uh, donuts, bread, ice, milk, creamery. I love it. You've got this. I don't know. Maybe you want to frame this side of it. So you've got this whole like living legend of whatever they were keeping track of it for groceries. Uh, but you've got the Budweiser menu. You have a, this was another beer menu. This We have a Schlitz menu. So you've got the Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. You've got the Schlitz, also the menu at the top. For those that don't know me, I actually collect menus myself. Um, I have a pre-World War II cruise menu collection. My goal is to get uh, one for every day of the year. Um, I've got over 100 so far. But so I always find menus. I always love reselling them. Um, so this is there. And then this one, I'm not sure if this technically would be considered a menu, but can you just, you know, if you're doing a, uh, a picnic or you're doing a, a church social and you've got to make a sign about what's going on, and you've got hot dogs available. Who would not want to see this vintage sign of the Wowie's hot and spicy, tasty sausages? One's available for 15 <laughs> cents each, but you've got your own little signage available. You know, we're in the Midwest, processed by the Central Meat Market in Phillips, Wisconsin. It even tells you what was in there. You probably don't want to know how the sausage was made, but they slap it right on there. You could make this a menu. You could make this a welcome sign. You could make this a birthday sign. This is vintage new old stock is blank on the back. Again, probably like when would they have been selling Wowie sausages, 15 cents based on that graphic. I'm thinking like, let's all go to the movies, maybe the sixties, fifties or sixties. Um, so Rosemary collects the old German embossed calendars. Those are beautiful as well. Um, so this is a, probably not technically a menu, but you could turn it into a menu. So you got vintage advertising. So you get the entire lot, the Wowie's poster, the Schlitz, the Budweiser with the notes on the back and the Coca-Cola. So you get them all. And absolutely, you can make color copies and make as many of these as you would like. Uh, but these are all original, all uh, vintage, new old stock, and they can be yours. I, we did have the bid, uh, at least one bid come through. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing the countdown uh, for, again, you get all four of them for one price. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we will stop the menu price. So I'll watch for the stop and see with uh, what Karen uh, puts stop in and who got the last bit. It looks like back in the day fines came in, possibly right before the end, but I will let Karen make the official decision. It looked like it. 
Thank you, Jeffrey. I was like, I really appreciate when, when Scott invites me to be a part of his sale. I always try to make sure I've got really good stuff and stuff that I've not offered before. So, but I do try Patrick, and have good stuff all the time. Patrick, we can do sales anytime you want. So it was... Oh, and Robert, I'm sorry, Robert is back in the day finds. Like you threw me there for a second. I apologize. I did know that though. Uh, back in the day finds Robert. Thank you so much. $21. Back to Scott. Now this is going to tear you up. Tore me up. I bought this at a flea market in New Jersey two summers ago. I was digging through a box of old photographs and I found an original photograph of old Elnor Roosevelt. Now, you're going to see her in a minute, but this is from an old press release, an old newspaper. And we're going to start off at $10. You might want to see the picture before you place a bid, but this is, this is Elnor. Um, of course, after the war and after Franklin passed away, of course. But let's see what it says. I'm going to bear with me while I read for you because you're going to want to know what it says back here on this sort of purple, uh, like mimeographed paper. But you can see it's the original thing. I don't know if it's Associated Press or not. Some of the paper is too small for me to see. Now, 1949. All right, 1949 is the year. There were three pictures in the series. I only have one of the three. So bear that in mind while I read to you what it says. This will just take a minute. It says on the back, watch your credit, international news, blah, 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 blah. Full stop for your women's page, New York. Okay. Politically speaking, the past fifth, the past something years have been uh, have brought drastic changes in the life and the habits of Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt. But lest anyone think that the politically astute former first lady of the land has not kept abreast of feminine fashions, as she has with uh, political trends, these three photographs will dispel any doubt. Now remember, I only have one of the three. They show the three definitive trends in hairdos adopted by Mrs. Roosevelt as they gained favor in the different periods. Now, the first picture, which I don't have, was October of 1934, where she is wearing a pompadour. March of 1943, uh, it doesn't say what her hair was. This picture here says... Um, in March of 1948, and as at, at right, Miss Roosevelt's version of the Mary Martin hairdo in September of 1949. This is Mrs. Roosevelt wearing her Mary Martin hairdo of 1949. Well, I'm telling you what, I love me some Elnor Roosevelt. I cannot say that that would be my favorite hairdo of hers. <laughs> I kind of prefer of the look that she had in the 1930s. But I'll tell you what, she was one of our country's greatest first ladies, I think. <laughs> and this little, what is it, a five by seven, I guess, something like that. Um, you know, this was, in a, this was in a ladies magazine. And there she is with her Mary Martin hairdo. Now, this is probably 1949. Was she yet involved with the League of Nations, Patrick? Help me out with me. It's right around, that's probably into the early 50s, yeah? Yeah, so. Her, her League of Nations involvement. Well, League of Nations, so she would have been uh, United Nations. United Nations, I'm yeah. sorry. League of Nations United was Nations. after World War One. Yeah. So, yeah, you are you're you just jumped the wrong war, but you're, you're on the right track. Right. This it's I know in the in the I want to say the building was built in fifty or fifty-one. So like yeah. it had probably been founded around the time. So yeah, she would have been yeah. pretty active at that point. This is around the time when she was doing her close to doing her things with the United Nations in any way. It's just, you know, there she is with her little Mary Martin hairdo. I and don't it's think cool that it has the stamps on the back because like a lot of people don't recognize the business aspect of this. Like you couldn't right. just back, particularly back then, you know, hop on the internet and snag a picture. You would order a picture and you got permissions. And it's unfortunate that they they attached the that teletype stuff to the only the one picture, so the other two got separated. But 
that was that's right. just like a whole business model that doesn't exist anymore. And yeah. those those photos are just so fun to keep that aspect of it. Yeah. So yeah. No, not flattering, but you know what? My gosh, I'll take her any. I think she's wearing my table runner around her neck. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. We have no bids. I don't think anyone. Yeah, Kels, not League of Nations. That was my slip of the tongue. I meant United Nations. Um, um, but anyway, let's move on. I don't think we have any Elner Roosevelt uh, interest in that. So we're going to go over to Patrick. And then if there's any interest at the end, just let me know and we'll come back again. So we're going to get out of that and go back to, okay, Gail, $10. Well, all right, we're going to count it down. We have one bid at $10 and I'm counting it down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's it. Now, I talked about this for 10 minutes. And if you didn't place a bid and you don't get it, <laughs> don't get mad at me. Didn't Mary Martin have straight hair? I don't know, but according to this, this was her Mary Martin hairdo. Didn't she wear Mary Martin hairdo in South Pacific? That would have been that would have been what year? Well, and Poodle, Poodle pointed out in the chat that she did have short hair for South Pacific because she washed her hair on stage. And she washed you know who right out of her hair. And see, to me, Mary Martin hair is like the Peter Pan hair, which was straight. But that was for that role. And that, yes. I think, uh, was that 50s or 60s? That was at least 50s, if not 60s. So Mary Martin was around for a while. So, okay. So we're going to stick in World War II era, um, at least in the sense, we're, I'm not quite to 49, but we've got uh, Eleanor. This is probably the favorite. Patrick, give me just a second, because oh, I'm not, not. My, I don't know who my winner is. Oh. Uh, I, I see did it. see it. Gail Cathy. Ten dollars from Gail Cathy. C -A -T -H -E -Y. Gail C A T H E Y. Okay, Gail. Let me tell you. Thank you. S bear with me. C A T H E Y. I believe you're new to me, Gail. Gail, would you please email me at? I'm sorry, it's not on the screen. Old Curiosity Shop ninety nine at gmail.com, and I'll need all your information. Your home address. Your address associated with your PayPal account if you have one. If you don't have a PayPal account, you have to let me know because I'll send you an invoice and you can check out as a guest. So go ahead and send that, all that information. We got you. That was Gail Cathy, $10, um, Old Curiosity Shop, 99 at gmail.com. There it is. Thank you for putting that in. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. And it's your turn, Patrick. Okay. So since we did our Eleanor Roosevelt, which she was first lady, at least through part of the World War II, uh, we've got one of probably my favorite uh, ephemeral lot of, of the night. These I picked up specifically because I knew I was going to be doing this sale. I saw these. I'm like, this will be a fun one. So you get an entire, you get all five of these. These are five issues of the Yank Down Under newspaper. They are $25 start, and I will show them as quickly as I can, but so you get an idea of what you're getting. So it's $25 start, and what these were, you can see this one is March 3rd, 1944. These were issued to the troops in Australia, yanked down under, and they are filled with articles and art. And what is great about these is, open this up, we've got... Every one of them has a full page pinup. Ooh! So we've got Ann Savage, pinup girl. So she was in this. Check out those heels, the fishnet stockings. So oh, you've got great articles, some great photography. There, each issue is only, what is this, like 12 pages, 14 pages? Oh, no, 24 pages, actually thicker. Um, some great photography. So we've got one from 19. This is March 1944. Hop to the next one is November of 1943. Check out the image on the front of that one. You've got the cartoons on the back. Let's see who the pinup is in this issue. This one you get Elise Knox. 
check out that gown and check out the torpedo bra. Woo! Vinny would love these. So we've We're got, right this is November, 1943. Again, cartoons on the back, comics, I guess on the back. See who the pinup is in this one. This one we've got Betty Avery. Ooh la la. So she's in here. And I think Betty Avery, now this, the whole thing has been folded a couple of times because these would have been mailed as well. But some great, again, some great illustrations, some great art on these. Uh, this one is January 44. So you've got troops, American troops with a zebra. So you don't really think about necessarily uh, the World War II happening in Australia, but we had troops all over the place. Yeah. This one, the pinup is Ann Miller kicking up her heels. We've got the Ann Miller pinup. And then the fifth issue is from December of 1943. Got a great action shot in the front. Again, uh, please, it's a, um, the sorry. start is 25. Okay. So, uh, it's just, we're start at 25. Okay. Yeah, start was 25, and I don't think we've had a bid. Oh, look at that kitty. So this one, so well, actually, this is not the pinup, but you know, it's like there's a pinup of a pinup, glamorizing a pill. Uh, let's see who's the pinup in this issue. You've got a bid. Ruby Lacey, thank you, Florida Golden Girl. So Ruby Lacey is the pinup in this one. So all of them have articles, all of them have the comics, and all of them have at least the one pinup. I'm never a huge proponent for tearing them apart because they're in such great shape. But the fact of the matter is those pinups in themselves could be framed. Yeah. Uh, and some of the individual shots, you know, there's just action shots of the soldiers, you know, got story about the heart of Texas. Uh, all of these is all from the Yank published Down Under, which I was not familiar with, but the concept, I... The minute I saw those pinup girls, it, I'm sorry, it's 25 for the whole set. That you get them all, you get all five. $25 for all five. I'm sorry if I wasn't clear on that. Now we're not doing choice. You're getting the whole batch. So that's only five bucks a piece. Okay. Um, so we got the current bid is 25 bucks for the whole pack. I will go ahead and start the countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one, and we are at zero. All right. We are going to wait for the stop. And as soon as the stop shows up on my screen, I'm going to highlight who I see. And it may be, it may be the fact that uh, Minnie might have come in. Herminia Gonzalez might have come in just to hit a Florida Golden Girl at 40. But we'll wait and we'll see what our moderator tells us. Um, do you see Minnie at 40, Patrick? That is who I see right before the stop as well. And oh. yes, Karen is saying Minnie at 40. Oh, okay. Randy is complimenting you on your great pottery collection. Thank you. That that is one of my older collections. It's taken. I've uh, I started that collection the year I got the piano because I and I started it because I thought it looked great on the piano. And personally, I think I'm right. I think it does look great on the piano. Indeed, it does. I'd also like to thank everyone who's helping out in the chat. I do see that uh, KP has been helping, and I appreciate that. And Jeffrey Reed is posting things, and I appreciate that. You know. Yeah. It's team effort. And when we get over 300 folks, it really is helpful. Um, and we now have 358. So thank you, everyone. And thanks, whether we say it or not, or recognize it or not. Um, it, it's anything that you do to help clarify is we appreciate. Oh, it is 10 after nine. We didn't take an intermission. Let's keep going. Okay, so let's keep the ball rolling. This is going to be lovely on your Easter table or springtime table or whenever. We're going to start at $18 on this, and it measures 31 by 18 and a half. 31 
inches long by 18 and a half wide. I believe this to be linen. It was made in Czechoslovakia. And this was made prior to the Second World War. This goes back to the 1930s, made in Czechoslovakia, and it is just beautiful. I didn't iron it, but this is a beautiful dresser scarf or for the center of your dining room table. And I'm going to back off and let you see it a little bit better. You're going to have to trust me when I tell you that it is a very delicate peachy color, peachy. Now, you're going to say, well, but it looks brown to me. It looks green to me. It looks orange to me. That's because of your TV screens and ring lights and all of that. So, but it's very peachy looking. We've all bitten into a peach. You know what a peach looks like. Isn't that beautiful? Not a big tablecloth but a small um, piece of linen, and I think it's linen, to be put on your table, and it could go on the center of a table. It could go as, on a, dre as a dresser scarf. I can see this on a beautiful dining room table. I think that is ecclesiastical. Well, it's, it's, it's not the design at the top is different than the design at the bottom. Yeah. Let me get it. Let me hold it all the way out. The, the uh, vestments. You, what, is, what is giving me the vibe is it's a little big, but it's uh, for those of us who grew up Catholic, the cloth, when they take the, uh, the uh, chalice and then yeah. put the board on top of it and then drape the cloth over the top of it. That's kind of what it's giving me that vibe. Because well, it's, it's directional. It's yeah. gorgeous. It, it's possible. I'm I will ready. give you the, evil, the side eye for not pressing it, though. But. No, 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 no. I'm also getting ready to show you a table runner that also is directional. <laughs> this, this is going to come up in a few minutes. Tease, tease, tease. Everybody is going to think this is a, rug, a prayer rug. It's not a prayer rug. Um, I, don't, I don't discount what Patrick is saying at all. Could be. So Judy and Randy are also, they're calling it an altar cloth, which is probably the technical term. Right. But, um, we, but just to be specific, we do not know that this no. is an altar cloth. Okay. Because it also looks like Celtic knots. So, you know, it's got a little bit of everything going on there. It's gorgeous. Right. It's beautiful. And, and, and um, so I just want to make sure that we're clear um, that this, this, this wasn't necessarily for liturgical use. It could have been, but simply because, uh, because, uh, the, it's an asymmetric or the pattern is directional doesn't necessarily mean that it was for liturgical use, but it could have been. Look, what's most amazing is this little paper tag. That is and, amazing that it's still attached to that. I know. And it says made in Czecho Slovakia. <laughs> And uh, you don't have to be Catholic, Catholic to know about vestments and table linens. We, you know, whether you serve the, the, the these were used for the Eucharist and also for communion and, and also, anyway. So it could be, but wouldn't necessarily have to be. You can see there that little, you can even tell by, and I know it's probably blurry. When I'm moving close, it gets blurry for me. Uh, and I apologize for that. But uh, this is a 1930s era paper tag that's on there and there are no stains on it it's not ripped is it uh, is it silver or is it just a is it like just a sheen what's it's, actually creating the pattern it's the sheen that's it's creating. a sheen okay yeah. yeah so it's a sheen it's it's all it's all the same color but the way if i turn it around and let you see the back of it again the way when you see it in the light, the sheen, it gives off a, <laughs> like a, are you talking about like a Martin sheen? Or <laughs> I'm going more Charlie, but you know. Char okay, well, that's fine with me. Anyway. Oh, I nice hem stitching on there. That's nice. The cut with a cut. Yeah, hem stitch. that's pretty. So we will, I think. Sparkle and uh, Munge is calling it polished linen. Polished linen. Which sounds really impressive. And I'm, so I'm going to, I'm going to go with that. 
polished linen. Well, we often talk about polished bottoms, so which is a good thing. And but here we have polished linen when we're talking about glass. So we'll and count these in at twenty-four. We'll count this down. It's in beautiful condition. Um, again, Czechoslovakia made before the Second World War, and we'll count it down. I think this would be beautiful on your Easter table. So here we go. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I'll just carefully fold this back. Yes, I didn't iron. <laughs> I didn't iron. I do have an iron. You just stop. I do have an ironing board, but I didn't do that. I just didn't get myself together. Let's get the solo out of there and we'll come back to this. I pulled out, it's, I think it's considered like a dorm ironing board. It's like, it's got the little tiny legs and you put it on your counter. That was all I had. I <laughs> iron when I travel, so I'll, I'll iron my shirts when I travel for work. Other than that, I technically, I typically don't have to iron at home. Patsy M at 26. Oh, did she outbid herself? She ended up outbidding herself. So okay. yes, it's Patsy M at actually at 24. All right. I've got that written down. Patsy M at 24. I thank you. I thank you. And Patrick, it's your turn. All right. Your turn. And uh, Holly Jo, welcome Holly Jo. She said this is her first time in a chat. So well, welcome Holly Jo. Definitely watch some of the videos. Uh, you've got Scott who basically lives the 20s and 30s. So he is a, an absolute interest in all of the same era that you are you uh, like to collect. I really? tend to sell that era because I feel I just am attracted to that era. Pre-World War II is kind of where I lean toward. But in my own collections, I actually pre go into antiques. I go... 19th century is kind of my my jam uh but i don't have 19th century i've got a stack of linens and it's kind of gonna be a little bit of a game because i'm not 100 percent sure what all of these would be considered i have a feeling i have a combination of what might be handkerchiefs might be napkins but i think some of them are coasters and for those who have followed my channel i have an obsession with coasters yes, i don't know why i don't think it's weird everyone else thinks it's weird but i like coasters so what I have is an entire stack. You get the entire set. So no, no confusion. All of these, it's a $10 start and you'll get all of these. So for $10 start, you first, what you are getting is a set of these four stitched, very small cloths that I'm thinking are just, I don't think they're big enough to be napkins. I think these have to be either left, you know, they're designed to be folded so they're coasters, or maybe they were like little, like tiny little fingertip things you take with your nut dish or something like that. I, I see this as a bridge set because there's a four, there's four of these. So I don't see this as a handkerchief. It, these are linen, and I'm sure I would I would love to have the term of what this raw edge is considered. Um, it's machine stitched, but it is machine stitched individually which i and i'm fascinated for those who don't know my background i actually owned a fabric store for 10 years with my wife so cocktail napkins coasters exactly holly joe that these are done by a machine but they are not stitched identically by the machine so a lot of times you can tell that on the back uh sometimes they're carrying stitches um so they just seem to be like little either coasters or little cocktail napkins I don't think they're dinner napkins. So you have all four of these, and we and thank you for the first bid that has already come through from Bonnie. You also get a set of four. Also, these I would say fall in the cocktail napkins. These do not have the creases in them, but they're only stitched on the very corner. Um, it is a little rooster. And again, these are machine stitched because you're not doing that by hand. So this is this is a machine stitch, both the little red uh, coxcomb at the top. You also have some decorative stitching in a scalloped hem. Again, machine stitched. So you get a full set of four of those. 
You then have what I probably would have been a set of four at some point. Unfortunately, now is only a set of three. But color correct your computers. You get a set of these kind of uh, like a tealish green color. A, a, um, I'm trying to think there's a type of blue, something powder blue. No, not, it's not powder blue. Butter. There's a term and I, it's for some reason I can I can know, I can't think of what color blue that is. Uh, and then kind of a, a mauvey pink. Um, and there you go. Rooster's chicken is cocktail napkins, you know. Uh, so then, and these also have the stitch of the little flower, little tulip down the corner. Same design. So again, these were as a set, but with the different colors. So unfortunately, there probably would have been a fourth color. So a lot of these just seem to be like bridge sets or something like cocktail napkins, something where you have your little bridge table, you've got your little nut dish, you've got your little glass or whatever and everyone has their own little napkins and then the last piece is these are a little bit bigger there's only two of these these are a little bit bigger so these could have been considered actual napkins and they are also stitched cornflower thank you you see read my mind cornflower blue that was exactly and i don't know how you figured that out from the random sounds that were coming out of my mouth um cornflower blue that's exactly what i was thinking of so this one also has a stitch design, kind of a geometric pattern. And then you've got that lovely lavender and orange with the green. Again, I do this all of the time. It, 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 it upsets people. This again is machine done. If this were done by hand, mostly, most likely those would have been, the stitches would have been carried. Um, so it's machine done, but it's it's still got a nice little hand touch. It's not super, super clean. And it's got that little hem, hem stitch design um, with the little the little holes at the edge where basically what you've done is you've taken the linen, separated it, and then stitched some of the threads together so you create the pocket of those holes. So you get all of these for one price. All right, yes, I can fold this. So these were a pair of the larger ones. And so a luncheon, Mary Bessie, maybe a luncheon napkin, which I could see that because it's not, it wouldn't be considered a full fledged like lap napkin, but it's definitely bigger than the other. So these are 11 inches square, this pair. Uh, then you get the set of three with the little tulips down at the corner. And that, those were basically 10 inches square. Then you get the little cocktail, cock napkins, a little hen, a uh, little rooster napkins with a little design again on the corner uh, with the scalloped edges that you get a whole set of four and then the stitch design and to me these are probably the oldest of all of them um they're still done by machine you can see the machine stitching that was done along the edge but i'm still thinking those are like 40s so mm -hmm. uh, you get a set of four of those i do see a bid uh coming through so i'm going to go ahead and count down for the stack from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. All right, we watch for the stop and see. There may have only, I'm not sure. I know you have a bid or had one. Yes, and it's, it looks like it's Hermania. And I apologize if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. Um, somebody was referring, possibly referring to her as Minnie as well. Yeah, Minnie is uh, what she's called by casually by her friends. That's Minnie. Well, I hope I can consider you a friend, Minnie, and I can refer to that as well because I don't want to slaughter your name. Uh, and that was Minnie at $15. So I can add that to the newspaper. The, uh, Yankee magazines that are heading your way. Thank you. One of the design, one of the interior uh, design fads of the turn of the century, 1890s, through the Edwardian era, by the time you get into the 1920s, the Turkish corner <laughs> is now fussy. It's old fashioned. It's Victorian excess. Yeah. And when we get into the 1930s and 40s, ugh, people are ripping their gingerbread, destroying their mansard roofs, 
And what was the fad of the 1890s and the turn of the century is now grotesque and ugly and oppressive. You see this in magazines and in literature of the 1940s, constantly chopping up anything Victorian. Anyway, having said that, I've got another runner for you. When you look at it, you will say, ah, that's not a runner. That's a rug from the Middle East. It's not a rug. It is a table runner, and it's still hanging on to that Orientalism. You know, people wanted, wanted a touch of the exotic in their homes in the 20s, but it, that starts to fade. This big thing right here is beautiful. It's another beautiful runner. We're going to look at the whole thing in just a minute, but let me tell you that we're going to start at $20. It's in good condition for its age. It's about 100 years old. And it measures 39 by 25. So 39 long by 25, I'm sorry, uh, by 25. So let's hold this up now after I ran my lips about it. And we'll let you see it. You can see that it is, as Patrick mentioned about the other piece, it is directional. And this looks like a prayer rug, does it not? That was absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. The color is so rich and that, that design is so beautiful. So the question is, what is a Turkish corner? It was a popular fad in the 1890s, turn of the century, to have a corner of your room decorated exotically. So you'd have Persian, nothing matched, Persian carpets, big overstuffed, richly upholstered uh, fabric on fainting couches, Moorish types of light fixtures, things from the Orient. Um, this is not a prayer rug. <laughs> Let's get that out of the way. Uh, this was meant for we'll turn it this way you can see the back of it so this would go on the top of a um, table and library tables library tables that was a popular piece of furniture in those days and um, things from the orient things from the middle east all of these types of things were meant to be used in homes, and it was a popular fad. People decorated that way. <laughs> and, Briar Lee says her whole house is a Turkish corner. I love oh, that. Turkish corner, yeah. Um, and, and so you've got this wonderful fringe along the edge. See? Made of velvet. Again. And then when you brush it, depending, depending on the way you brush it, you have this wonderful... Um, well, the sheen, it kind of changes colors a little bit. I would just want to touch it all the time. Oh, I know. <laughs> like, I, I just and, want to put my hands on through yeah, it right now. And it would be thrown on the back of a fainting sofa. It would be it would be hung on the wall, you see? And people decorated like this. Go and look up Turkish corner, Moorish corner, um, that kind of thing. Uh, very popular to decorate your homes, your homes like this. Um, but of course, by the time you get into the into the mid twenties, this is now fussy and Victorian, and it's old fashioned. So, it indeed looks very much like a Muslim mus, Muslim prayer rug. Now, I'm not going to fuss with people. If you want to call it a prayer rug, you may do that. Um, I won't fuss with you, <laughs> but. Uh, I happen to know that this particular design was popular in interior design in the 1920s, and they looked very much like prayer rugs, and they were actually used, as I said, on um, as decorative items on tables. But you know what? If you want to throw this down and point yourself in the direction of Mecca, go for it. Well, I think what it's it's, and again, this is why I loved always loved watching your channel, Scott. It's the education that people recognize. Yes, there are a lot of people who are very strongly believe that as a prayer rug. But what people have to understand is back 100 years ago, you would have people that would have traveled to those areas and seen that design. There was no internet. There was no 
easy photography, mass, mass marketed, they would bring that design home and then put it on prints that could then be sold at Montgomery Ward, sold at Wanamaker, sold at all these different places. So yes, the pattern and design is of a prayer rug, right. but it's, somebody said it could be for a travel, which again, I'm not going to, you know, tear down yeah. and argue with anybody. Right. But the idea is that you've taken those patterns just like we do today. You, you see a design like, oh, I like that. Let's put it onto wallpaper. Let's put it into letterhead. Let's put it whatever. Yeah. And then you look at it now. It's like, oh, I know what that is. It's a design. And right. ours gratia artists, art for the sake of art. Art for the sake of art. But also, this was a fad. The whole Turkish corner, you can deep dive into, go ahead and do it, deep dive into Turkish corner, and it was the corner of the home. Rugs were draped. You had you had these Moorish type uh, light things. Layers. Everything was layered. It was layered. They would mix Orientalism. They would mix exotic Middle East. They would have things, for, and this was supposed to be, you were sophisticated, you know. You could only see these places many times through your stereopticon, you know. And so, um, so it was a very popular way to, to decorate in that era. And we'll count it down. It's an, yes, over a piano, you can do anything with it. Put it on the back of your toilet seat if you want. Hang it anywhere you want. I think it's wonderful and rich and vibrant and perfect for home use. Why don't we count it down since I think there's a bid somewhere. Yes, there was. There's actually quite a few bids. It's doing very well. I think well, Gloria has it at 100 right now. Well, we'll go ahead and we'll count it. I guess I better stand back out, stand back up so you see the whole thing and then let you count it down. But it is the perfect size for a library table or to hang on the wall. So ten, ready to count it down? 10, oops, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, I can't do my fingers. Three, <laughs> two, one. And certainly, if a, if if someone wanted to actually uh, use it as a portable um, prayer rug, they could do that. I try to put it, and this. Oh, I forgot. To, well, I guess it's too late now. But it doesn't smell. It doesn't have any weird. Uh, all of these things, when I get them, I wash them. I soak them in warm water, and, and um, there is a silent movie with that Turkish corner. Yeah, you'll see a lot of Turkish corners in old silent movies. The Sheik, yes, Poodle. Uh, uh, Valentino was always lounging on things like this, eating fruit with naked women running around, or half naked. <laughs> right? Let's bring Patrick back. I think I took too long on that. I apologize. No, it was a beautiful piece, and it was a great conversation. Yeah, you, know, you take extra long on your next piece because I talked too much on it. No, That's quite all right. I, I and I enjoy watching your sales because we'll spend that time, and I learn something instead of just seeing something because it was pink. So thank oh, you. For I think that. it's pretty. Did the did the stop? I didn't even see. I'm yes, sorry. there was a stop, and she did clarify it is Gloria Boyd at a hundred dollars. Okay, Gloria Boyd. Gloria, yes. I'm not sure if I know you, so send me your stuff, okay? Uh, old Curiosity Shop 99. Thank you, Gloria. Old Curiosity Shop 99 at gmail.com. We'll get it up there for you. Gloria Boyd. Um, okay, I've got it. Thank you, everyone. And in the interest of continuing education and the interest of everything that goes around comes around, as you, as Scott said, the idea of the Turkish corner, all of that, uh, there was a comment in the chat earlier, and I apologize, I don't remember who made it, but you also remember that um, King Tut's tomb was found in the 20s. So there's always this internationalism, this idea of this, these designs. If you predate another 50 years, you get into what is one of my favorite eras of design, and that is the aesthetic movement. Oh, yeah. And this is a hardcover Monroe's Practical Speller. And it's this whole same idea that you can take motifs that could be Persian, they could be Oriental, they could be Middle Eastern, they could be European, they could be just about anything, that you take this design, stack them on top of each other. Aesthetic movement was very popular in print. Yeah. Because you could take all of these two-dimensional designs and apply them next to and on top of each other and get this absolutely phenomenal design to it. And what you have here is Monroe's Practical Speller, which, as I kind of already hinted to, 
was copyrighted in 1875. So I've got an 18, 19th century hardcover book that is a spelling book. Now, where does it start? Oh, I'm sorry. $10 start. Sorry. Thank okay. you, Karen. $10 start. So we, and I took the bookmark out. And of course that meant I lost the page I wanted to talk about because I found this is the practical speller. And there's a little introduction at the beginning to say, you know, it's silly to just have lists of words. You need to learn the words in connection to other things. And so all of these words have been connected to a list of flowering shrubs, a list of herbs, a list of wild animals. But what I wanted to showcase was there was articles of dress and things that clothing is made out of. So KP Gunther, thank you for your $10. So you've got still lists of lists of words to be spelled, but this is a pop quiz of terms that I have to admit, I'm not particularly familiar with and I'm not trying to put Scott on the spot because we did not cover this. Um, but so articles of dress, all right, fairly straightforward. We got the gown, the coat, the vest, the blouse, the socks, the hose, a hood, scarf, shawl, cape, nice, uh, apron, collar, cravat. Okay. We know what the cravat is. Surtout. S-U-R-T-O-U-T. Aha. Uh -huh. Do you have any idea what that is? It's listed along with the jacket and the waistcoat. So I'm assuming maybe it's a vest, but I was not familiar with that one. I I, uh, I got me some pantaloons, but I don't believe I have a surtout. And so I love the fact that I got the gauntlet is on there in the next column, wrapper, also wristband. Not 100% sure what the wristband would be. I know that they, you know, they had the paper collars. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they also had paper cuffs i'm assuming mm -hmm. that's what a wristband would be so i found that fascinating mm -hmm. and um oh it's, there is a question for you scott if you're selling the velvet back runner uh i don't know which one that is oh well i'll tell you oh it's sparkle and munch to the rescue sir tout is a coat that covers everything it's a frock coat thank you miss sarah and sparkle Okay. Um, I will run to the basement and get it. Honestly, I, oh, wasn't, okay. I wasn't planning on selling it. Um, I, I'll continue to think about it. It's beautiful and I use it. But let me run to the basement. Patrick, do your thing. I'll be back in a second. Yep. And then, so then the other, so that was the articles of dress. And then right underneath it is clothing is made of. So this one ended up being another pop quiz. So, okay, so basic stuff, silk, lace, serge. I think I've heard that word before. I'm not 100% sure what I recognize because, again, this is 1875, so it's not like the Surge jersey like uh, Halston did. But I think Surge is kind of, there's a texture to it. Chintz, I know that. Gauze, linen, satin. Tibet. T-H-I-B-E-T. -E it's right alongside the velvet and the poplin. That is definitely, and I owned a fabric store for 10 years. I have never heard of that word. Tibet. Cotton, camlet, no clue, woolen, calico, gingham, cambric, cambric I think is a cotton, cashmere, broadcloth I know, satinette, and then alpaca, which I guess alpaca, I mean we know it fur, but I don't know what that would have been in the 19th century if, if they were doing something different, if alpaca meant something else. Um, so yeah. It's, it's, there's just some really interesting history in here. So again, some of the other lists, grains and grasses, um, the head and neck, tonsil, palate, larynx, windpipe, review of difficult words. Look at the first word in the review of difficult words, calm. Okay, let's define difficult. Zephyr, galaxy, satellite, arrow light, but calm. That's your heart. So Tibet is some material, something of goat's hair. Okay. Uh, parts of a flower, words in geography. Again, if you want to use this to learn spelling and you know do the history lesson, absolutely fantastic. To me, this the showcase is the actual print book. Um, so I will go ahead and do the countdown. And if Scott doesn't come back, I'll just pop into my next <laughs> item. But 
Yeah, I'm back. He's back. Okay. So uh, didn't want to spend a lot of time on this one, but I brought it up because this ended up being the 19th century version of the Turkish corner was the aesthetic movement. And it's this whole idea that a lot of people became that Victorian excess. You start doing gingerbread, you start doing fabrics, you start doing furniture that has all of these patterns in it. It can be a lot, particularly I'm a maximalist. I like a lot. Not everyone likes it. So you ended up reverting away from it. And the British arts and crafts movement really kind of fought against this because this was just too much. So I do think we had a bid, maybe, uh, but I'm going to count it down. Yeah, so I've got, uh, it looks like KP was at 13. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do the countdown. $10, I'm sorry, $10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and zero. I'm going to watch right. for the final count. So the discussion ended up being Tibet was another term that you had stepped away with a fabric called Tibet, T-H-I-B-E-T. -E that was another one that I was not familiar with. Hmm. All right. So I see the stop. It looks like KP Gunther got it at 17. I'll verify that with Karen. And she did. So thank you so much, KP. Uh, I'm going to do another small. No, this is the small. Well, not the. Yeah, this is this is a small one. Let me go solo. There I am. OK. We got another one. This is a little one. It's not been cut down. This is exactly the size that it was made. And this the opening bid will be ten uh, ten dollars. And this is velvet as well. It's another little tiny table scarf, table runner. And this one measures 18 by eight. And this is 18 by eight. Sorry for that. 18 by eight could go on the top of, so we'll let you see it. Again, uh, it's clean. And it's great uh, size. Yeah, I'll let you see the back of it. And I'll let you see the finished edge. Is it like an orange or a rust? What's that color? Yeah, um, it is a, ooh, yeah, you know, but when you turn it in the light, <laughs> it is a, it is an orangey, rusty color. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't glow. <laughs> and so uh, what I've got here is a, a little old beat up candle table here and we'll, we'll open it up. I'm not selling the table, but you get the idea. These little tiny occasional tables that folks had in the 1920s. And just so you can see, they would sometimes be placed this way. I've often seen them placed this way as well, where they hang down on either side. Um, they would be used that way as well. Christina is asking for an estimate on the year. Again, this is going to date 19, we're going to say circa 1920s, in the 1920s. These were so, by the time you get into the 30s, this is fussy and old fashioned. So we're somewhere in the Woodrow Wilson era through the Calvin Coolidge era. <laughs> and it's a small one. You know, so it's a small one. And um, I look for these anytime I can find them. And sometimes uh, they're stained with ink or they're ripped or they're frayed or a wax candle has gotten all over it. Sell that table. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's mahogany and it's got a wonderful inlaid. Uh, yeah, the table's gorgeous. Uh, look at all the wear on the top. I know. I guess I shouldn't be teasing you with that table, but. 
So this little guy here, we'll count this little one. Oh, a Barbie rug. Yeah. So we have Florida, nice, Florida Golden Girls in at 70. Small one for a tabletop. And again, I will let you see closely so that you can see the edge. That's finished, and then we'll turn it around, and we'll let you see the back side, the back of it as well. So you can see this is all woven. And we'll we'll go ahead and we'll count it down. He never sells the furniture; just keeps buying. <laughs> I do, Kells. And it looks like there might be a the, an indentation in the middle where the centerpiece bowl had originally been on display. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, there is where the velvet was. I'm, you caught that. I see it right here. Yeah, it's, it's just when you when it, when the light yeah. hit that sheen, you can kind of see the remnant of it. So yeah, it's exactly what it was for. An old lamp or an old center bowl or something sat there for years. Yeah, and and sort of has pressed that velvet down just a little a little bit in the center. I don't know how to get you to see it. It's not a stain. No, no. It's just where something Granny had something sitting there for a long. It time. proves that it's got age. Yeah, something the pressed, the piece. pressed on that. But um, free of smells and stains, this is ready to be used. If you, Or a goldfish bowl. Goldfish bowl. We'll count it down. Ten. I do know there's a bid in there somewhere. Ten. Yes. Not, nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Oh, a candy bowl. That would be neat. Gorgeous. Um, yeah. It, it's a, it's a, it really, by 1930, 32, 33, you get into the 30s and you just don't see it. It's just too fussy. It looks too Victorian for people. And it's funny how even some of the 1920s interiors are still cluttered. They're still rich with fabric and wood and drapes and carpets and... Fringe. I'm not sure what the 11... There's an 11 up there. Well, let's bring Patrick back. And yeah, we'll that was wayward. I keep... Karen put in, it was Florida Girl at 70. It's Florida Golden Girl? Florida, Go Fl Florida Golden Girl at 70. Clutter equals classy. Thank you, Florida Golden. I've got you. Let me write this down. Patrick, it's yours. All right. So we um, had, I don't, I don't think I saw Vinny in the chat, um, but this was something we were going to have regardless because people were talking about what Vinny would like. We've got Hollywood Wolf Howls from 1953 is a little book of illustrated pinups. So this Woo! is a, this is a fifteen dollar start, and we've got a pretty saucy front cover. And then as you go through, every page either has a photograph or an illustration representing maybe not necessarily the best of that era of the 50s, but definitely the pinup era of the 50s. How can you find my hidden talent with the lights out? From the casting director, the woman running through the room. The photograph, does it say who the photograph is? Does that say, I don't know, I don't recognize who that is. So if anyone's not knowledgeable into the movie Starless, that might be somebody you recognize. Uh, every page is another photograph and another comic illustration. So we've got, ah, a well-seasoned dish. So not typically my humor. I was just in the bottom of a <laughs> box for so long. You know, that, that photo is tasteful, nice. And then you've got that. Is this all necessary for a pair of glasses? <laughs> And there seems to be nothing more than a booklet of sauciness. Very naughty, naughty. It doesn't seem to be advertising anything. 
it's they're not excessively risque. You know, right. there's no nudity. There's no everything is all humor. But it's definitely of that type of humor. Now, now, Susie, Mr. Jones isn't a talent scout, as her dress appears to be caught in the gears of a rolling machine. Yes, KP is. It's fun, naughty. Right. Is that Hedy Lamar? Might be Hedy Lamar. So I think I saw a couple bids. Uh, I think I've had um, you do at twenty bucks. So zip through just really quick. Everything is double pages, each with a photograph and a comic to go along with it. And then the blank is back is just blank. So again, it's like the only advertising is the whoever created it. Standout products from 1953. Uh, it was just a little body book that you would share with your buddies you know, in the 50s. So we will go ahead and start counting it down. <clears throat> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. All right. This is fun. <clears throat> Let's see. All right, Z Karen, stop. It's a lot of fun to bring items to you um, that maybe I wouldn't necessarily be selling in a live sale on my own, but to uh, to join up with Patrick and do a special. Do you like this? Should we do this once every couple of months, everybody? Should we do like a, a linen slash ephemera sale? We could do it. And congratulations, Poodle, for $16. Back to Scott. All right. Now, this is going to be fun. Not that everything that's preceded, it wasn't fun, but mm -hmm. uh, a solo lay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sell a magazine, and I'm not going to tell you what year it is yet. I'm going to show you a picture of interior design in the magazine, and I want you to guess what year you think this magazine was published. Yeah. Now, the magazine is $10. Let's take a look at a room that is, they're advertising, um, it says, win this room if you tell us what you think of it. So here we have a picture of a room, and apparently you can win all of the things that you see in this room. What year do you think this room, wait, don't, I hope I don't show you, accidentally show you the date. All right. Study the room. Get my fingers out of the way. All right. Now, I want you to be specific. What year? Okay, we have 1958, someone thinks. 1956, 1939. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> 63. What do you think, Patrick? I would be late 30s, early 40s. I'm like wondering if I'm super off. Okay, okay. This is fun. Okay. If you're thinking the 60s, you're a little too modern for that. In fact, if you're thinking the 50s, you're a little too modern for that. What year was this magazine published? This happens to be House Beautiful, February of 1946. 46. Oh, Judy Carter had right on the nose. Joan had it on the nose. 1946. Isn't it interesting? And I love the fact. I Carmen had it. 1859. You're being silly, Texas. Uh -huh. I think she meant 19. Okay. I love the fact that 
we have folks going from the 30s into the 60s, and yet this is right in between, in the middle of that. What does that illustrate? We know this. Designs don't, designs are not, design trends <laughs> were not born on the first day of a decade and then they end on the last day of the end of the decade, right? So a lot of design trends, not all of them, but they don't all belong to, oh, that's the 50s. No, that's the 60s. There's fluidity with design trends. Yeah. And something might be in a magazine and it might not be enormously popular till a few years after that. So in what month in 46? February. Because what you also consider is so many, so many of these plans happen months in advance. Yep. By, by that time, World War II would have been over. Yep. But sometimes they're making plans. They don't know what's happening in the world. Right. So, and, and it's very true. And so you often see, when you see like a room like that, it's easy. You, you'll see a little bit of the 30s in that room. You'll see a little bit of the mid-century in that room. Anyway, the magazine is $10. I think the high bid right now is 20 And it is House Beautiful. House Beautiful is not the same as good housekeeping. And it was not the same as Better Homes and Gardens. They had different editors. The magazine is in good condition. It is not falling apart. And it does not smell like a musty basement. You could sit right now and leaf through this and it's all there. It's not been cut up. I sit down and I study these like I'm at a graduate course. I'll sit down at night, you know, might be watching TV, might have music on. And I read these. <laughs> There's so much recipes, interior design. There's that room again. You know, everybody knows what you're going to find in a magazine. Articles. It really is, oh, how about some, oh, is that a steak? Oh, bring back a good old fat filled steak. All the vegetarians are throwing darts at the screen. Mm -hmm. Who puts butter on a steak? Look at that, Patrick. <laughs> oh, two glasses of red wine and a big old fatty steak with butter on it. Oh, I'm having a fit. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're not going to see a magazine right now. Steak with butter. Look at that. Now, if you looked at that, you might say, well, that's not the 40s. That looks maybe like the 60s. Well, look closely. That's 1940. What did I tell you? 46. Look at that. All right, I'm going to go on and on too much, so let's count it. Doesn't that look like it could be the 60s, Patrick? Absolutely. If that were a TV instead of a radio, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The man is, is blurred by the light. But, okay, so really cool uh, magazine. We'll count it down. House Beautiful, February of 19. The war is over. Oh my goodness, the factories are making toasters again and radios and ovens and you can get new tires for your automobile. At least here in America, things were not good in most of Europe, but 10, 9, <laughs> 8, 7, I want a steak with butter on it. 6, 5, 4, can I have one? 3, 2, 1, just twice a year. Just maybe once a, on my birthday, a big old fatty steak with butter on it. Oh, you didn't even see the back. You got to have some whiskey. Got it. All of the advertising. Alcohol and cigarettes. <laughs> Alcohol, cigarettes, big old fatty steak with butter. Ugh. You got to look for the cigarette ads that have doctors in, endorsing them because that yeah. was a fun thing too. That was a fun moment in time. Well, they had heart attacks at 50, but boy, they lived it up. Okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Healthy. We know we've, we've come a long way. All right. Just kidding. Anyway, moderation. All right, where are we? So I see this stop. We're going to wrap it up soon. And KP Gunther at $25, according to Karen. Okay, KP got it. At 25 Patrick, where are you? 
I'm right here. Okay. Um, my dear friend, it happens to be two minutes after 10. You want to sell a few more things? Sure. I got uh, two more that I can do. I mean, I've got more, but I, I'll, I have two prepped, so. All right. Well, we still have three. One more linen and then one more thing of paper. Okay. Go for it. Thank right. you. Thanks. So, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Unlike Scott, I'm going to ask, well, I'm going to ask the question like Scott did, but I don't have a specific answer for it. Got another linen. It's also stitched. But this pattern, I don't know the age of this. So again, we're getting into what appears to be, I would, I would say that this is probably that 60s era bridge table, you know, the bridge club, you get together, you mm -hmm. have your little card table set out and you're going to have your little mixed nuts and everything for the, for the girls to come over and play bridge. And you're going to have these decorative cloths done on them. But this pattern, I don't know what this is. It helps that it's upside down. So you've got this little floral pattern, but it's, you know, so it's kind of modern, but then I also see like, yeah, I don't know. I could also say that there's some Persian influence into that. Like there's a pomegranate in there. $10 start. Sorry, Karen. Thank you. I'm not used to having to do that. So $10 start for this. It is 42 inch square. And this is the same pattern all on all four sides. Yes, that was on my, uh, that was what I was ironing on my Instagram channel because this was actually pretty wadded up. <laughs> so you can see the, I think the colors on this are really pretty because you've got the greens, you've got kind of a persimmon color, got the blue, then you've got this nice little woven color, which is blue, not black. Just making sure. Yes, that is blue. And you've got the border on both the inner and the outer border. The inside is completely blank because that's where you'd be throwing your cards. So in the middle would be where the actual activity was. So you did, you wouldn't necessarily have a pattern in there. Your pattern would be draped around the edges. And you also have the little gathered stitch to create the open weave pattern at the edge of the linen. And it is a folded stitched hem. Great condition, same pattern across. I always look at stitching from the back and by looking at from the back, it is machine done. This was not done by hand. So it's machine done. It doesn't make it any more or less valuable, uh, but makes it very consistent. And it's just, it's a different type of pattern. It's just one of those cases where because it's a card table, I would say we're putting it in the sixties, but I don't know if I would have just, if I just took a picture of that little pattern, I don't know if I would have landed in the 60s as my individual design. Because uh, somebody just said it looks like in the 40s. And I would agree with Adam. Like you could actually pull this, for, pull this forward because they, they were bridge uh, tables and card games in the 30s and 40s too. So is it older? I don't know. But it's in fantastic condition. And it is, I think I did see a bid come in at 10 bucks, but I will go ahead and start the 10, uh, the countdown. Mahjong in Miami, 10, 9, I see Diane at 16, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we're at zero. But then we say it looks like a palm tree. I didn't see that because I was looking at it that way. So if I flip it the other way, uh, I guess you could try and say it's a palm tree. But then the palm tree would be upside down when it hung on your table. So I think the pattern does go this way. So I see the stop with Karen. And it looks like Diane Lasik gets that. Okay. At 16. Diane is a name I know well. Patrick, you'll do fine. Excellent. And now I can write nothing other than palm tree tablecloth because now I got palm trees in my head. <laughs> well, thank you, Dan. In 10 months, you'll have sugar plums in your head. There you go. Um, all right. Now, I don't know, Patrick, but whether or not I should actually try to sell this. I could be run out of town. Well, I can't back up now. 
Oh, Gauntlet's, yes. been, Gauntlet's, been, Gauntlet's in the book. Gauntlet has been thrown. So let's see. What do you got? Would you find it somewhat odd if I told you I was about to sell a vinyl shower curtain? You selling it? Yes. Let's just see what's going to happen. I'm going to hide you now. Now, ephemera are things that were meant to be thrown away or would be thrown away. Yes. Loosely speaking. They are ephemeral. They are ephemeral. I would say that a vinyl shower curtain, be quiet, Jeffrey Reed, laughing at me. I would say that a vinyl, is it vinyl? What is this? It says, it says made in the USA, luxurious premium vinyl shower curtain. I love this. It's $5. Are you going to swap me? $5 for a, an unused, you know what it smells like. Should I take it out? No, that'll mess it up. Well, if you buy it, you're gonna use it, right? I'm pulling it out. Oh, the smell. You ever open up a brand new uh, table? Uh, uh. <laughs> sniffing Can vinyl. alone for a moment? Here he is sniff yes, while I sniff my shower curtain. Look at $5. Okay, I'm taking it out because you know you're gonna use it. It's never been used before. It is lime green. It's probably from, if we don't get a bid in like five seconds, I'm putting it away. It's probably from uh, the 1980s or so. Um, but anyway, it's a, it's, yes, you can smell it. I know. A vinyl. <laughs> It's wrapping paper. There's all kinds of th fun things you can do with that. Oh, Diane's in at $7. Oh, Diane, thank you. You could actually take this out into the backyard, grease yourself down with a little bit of suntan lotion, turn on the garden hose, and have a slip and slide. Slip and slide. It looks like a 1940s tablecloth. And yet, I'm telling you, now don't let me get it too much unwrapped. I can't get it back. <laughs> I'm not going to do any more than that. I wish Jan Marie is at 16. I wish you could smell it. A, a, a classic. Oh, we can all smell it. We <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I've heard that before. It probably dates to the 80s, I guess. Um, let's, we'll try to get it back in there. But there it is. Shower curtain. And, and whenever they started doing that, didn't they start doing that in the 80s? They started in the 70s. Oh, but they, but they were popular. That became widespread in the 80s. Okay. So it's luxurious. It's premium. It's 72 by 72. It's a designer's classic, and it was made in the USA. And you the reason it was made in the USA makes it an antique, <laughs> because that did not happen very much. It is antique, and it's wonderful. And you can get your Prell shampoo, and you <laughs> And you're dippity do, and you can pretend. <laughs> well, dabble do ya. You can pretend. I wish you could smell it. I can't believe I'm so. Don't anybody. I'm deleting this video as soon as it's over. <laughs> Ten. I'm just kidding. Believe it or not, I have two of these, and I'm keeping one for myself. I'm selling one, and I'm keeping one for me. Ten. That's your colors. Nine. <laughs> Can you smell the prell? Eight. Yeah, it's kind of 70s lettering. Um, where were we? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I can't believe it. It matches my house colors. It's cream and green. I could make kitchen curtains out of it. Mm. So it goes around, comes around. Your greens from the 30s, but came back in the 70s. And the 80s are always going to always have the same colors. Did we sell it? Yes, you did. Okay, let's see who it is. Stop. Tell me who we got, Karen, and what. And then we'll let Patrick go. I love it. I said I'm keeping one. Unless, you know, there's a huge demand.
Who is it, Karen? I'm scrolling back trying to find it, but I'm sure Karen can find it. Oh, okay. I'll put you. I'll put you solo, and I'll keep my eyes on the screen. Yeah. Diane, it's there Diane. You go. Diane for twenty. And Diane. Um, All right. Okay. So, Your turn, Patrick. Diane, I'm thank you. Going to moving into a another lot. So you'll get all of this. It's a starting price of ten dollars, but you get all of it. So it's not choice. So it's not per item. You get all the all set. We're back to the true definition of ephemera, because we first have have a Coke, sign of good taste, drink Coca Cola, paper cups. So these were not designed to be to stick around for very long. Uh, they do have a stamp down at the bottom. And I'm not sure I ever figured out a year on these. Made in the USA, the Tulip Cup Corporation. It does have a zip code on here. So they are from after, it's a five digit zip code. So they are from after 1963. I'd say these are probably 70s or 80s. Uh, the Coca-Cola logo is pretty much used, looked the same for quite some time. So you get seven of the Coca-Cola cups. You also get this chow mein tonight advertising piece from i would assume this would have hung in a store that maybe ah chow mein was the name of the brand oh, I love a little it. hole at the top and i'm picturing that this is like a you can see this the design of a chinese lantern yeah a plasticky high sheen piece of plastic but it's on front and back so i'm picturing this like over the like a central case maybe on a wire or some sort of string that it would spin as you walked by, you know, to grab your attention. The Ah Chow Main tonight. Uh, so you get that signage and Chung King. What's that? Uh, do you remember Chung King? Oh yes, Chung King. In the two little cans, and you get a set of ten of these ice cream bar sleeves. So if you want to, do, if you do junk journaling, if you do craft projects, if you've got small gifts that you want to wrap for any holiday gift giving, you've got the little sleeve. These are from the Marine Veteran Ice Cream Company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, new old stock. They are just these little uh, glassine paper sleeves that would have covered up. You can see what the little boy is eating, covering up these little ice cream bar sandwiches. So you get a set of 10 of those well plus he's really the chow mein signage plus the seven uh coca-cola cups so definite ephemera yeah this one probably would have lasted a little bit longer because depending on how long they were selling it thank you bryn ten dollars from bryn for i heart old things but these would have been used and these would have been used and everything thrown away because no one was recycling back then yeah and glenn came in at 11. So right. we're going to go ahead and uh, do a countdown uh, for this entire set. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, <clears throat> and done. Watch for, oops, lost my page here. Watch for the stop. Looks like Bryn popped back in. Ooh, I'm not sure if Glenn made it or not. So let's see what uh, Karen sees. All right. I think you, it might be, that's what it might be, Patrick. So Bryn, I heard old things. Um, okay. Glenn, if you are interested in, believe it or not, I have an entirely duplicate set. So if you would also like them at 15, uh, send me an email and you can have them at $15 as well, Glenn. All right, thanks, Bryn. Okay. <clears throat> I would now like to, uh, for $5, I'd like to offer an original abstract photograph of you know, found objects. Uh, I don't know who took the photograph. Um, I can date it. Well, 
I know how old, I know when the radio was made, but that doesn't mean that the photograph was taken when the radio was made. But it's an original black and white photograph. Something maybe somebody did in school, uh, in high school, but it's an original old black and white photograph. And it's $5, I think it's eight by 10. And if I hold it really still, we will first look at a beautiful plastic uh, Emerson radio with bullet knobs in the Art Deco style. There's a little baby doll. I'm sorry, is it like a, uh, a little planter maybe next to it? And camel cigarettes. And then there's an ashtray right there. See that? Very cool. So very, very artistically done. Yeah, very artistically done. Someone purposefully, a photography student you know, someone placed these objects together and took this photograph and then developed it. There's some writing on the back in pencil. There's no date. And, you know, we're not really sure. It's It hasn't been creased. And so, you know, photography is art. I love old photography. And so uh, these are found objects that are placed together. And I just thought it was really neat. And it's five bucks. Anybody interested? Trojan for you is at 10. Okay, great. Sweet. You can frame this. No creases on it. And this is something that you're, you know, you're not going to go out and buy on your wall. You're not going to go to Target and find this. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. I can ship this media mail. 3, 2, 1. on that photograph. Let's... And we got the stop from Karen. All right. Oh, wait a minute. It was just the one bid from Trojan for you for 10. Okay. Then that means Trojan. Yeah, Trojan for 10. You've got it. Thank you. Patrick, have you got something else to sell? Uh, do we want to wrap things up? I mean, I do have another piece of linen, but we can wrap things up and we can save this for another time. What you want to do? You want to sell? I've got another. I've got, I could sell one more piece of linen as well. Okay. Let's each do one more linen then. Okay. We'll each do one more linen and then, then we'll, we will. So this. Oops. Wait a minute. This is a, I have a personal attachment to this piece because for those who follow my channel, I do community theater. And in many cases, I prefer to be the actor, but in some cases I am being hired to do props and set dressing. And this was a show that I was originally hired to do set dressing for and ended up that one of the actors got injured and uh, I ended up being in the show as well. Uh, so this is a $10 start. This was on the set of Arsenic and Old Lace. It is 34 inches square. And just as Adam said with one of the earlier ones that I do believe this falls into a slightly earlier uh, pattern. I don't think these are from the 60s. This might be 50s, but I think it's 40s or even 30s based on this stitching design that was being done. You can see it's a like a bouquet of flowers in a, like a little gathered um, netting. Uh, with the within the pink ribbon. Same thing. It would be designed for card playing. It would have gone, you know, or it could go on your tea table. Um, so KP got those underscoring this also probably from the 40s. Yeah, it looks like it. The patterns are the same on all four corners. It was machine done. So I'm going to show you the back. Anyone who knows that when I do fabrics and I, I really, I sold fabrics for 10 years, but I, so I really don't like doing fabrics as much. What I love doing is uh, needlework. And I tend to look at the back a lot because you can learn a lot um, about how the back was done. So this was done by machine. So we're not, we're not looking at grandma sitting around in a quilting bee. 
Um, but it is the same pattern on all four, all four sides. It has that raw edge that we saw on some of the uh, cocktail napkins, but it also has the stitching. And that's actually out of necessity because if you don't have that black straight stitch, this fray would continue to fray. It would actually keep going backwards. So that black line actually holds that pattern in place. So the fringe never becomes more than that much fringe. You can see it stops right where that stitching line was done. It is 34 inches square, Kels. Thank you for asking. 34 inches square. Again, no design in the middle. And it's a fairly hearty, hearty piece because as it being in uh, a show with me for about a month, it had wine spilled on this on a fairly regular basis. Well, we weren't using wine. We were using iced tea that looked like wine. Uh, it had iced tea spilled on this on a fairly regular basis. And you can see it was all cleaned up. All the staining came out. I would say it is linen. I was Einstein. Thank you for asking. I was actually Einstein. I was not supposed to be in the show. Uh, I was supposed to do props and set dressing, and about a month before it opened, the, the actor who was playing Einstein got injured, and he had to use a cane, and based on some of the physical uh, comedy that was being done, uh, decided he could no longer do it, and so I did. And uh, yes, played the arsenic. There you go. No, I played the old lace. That was, that was, a, that was my uh, nighttime gig. So... It's a beautiful piece. It's just, it's a, it's a great of its era. It makes a fantastic table topper and have, if I had a table that was this size, I actually would have kept this. Um, but I can't keep everything. I'm not a hoarder. I'm desperately trying not to be a hoarder. And uh, yes, literally he did. He broke his leg. Um, and yes, that was the Peter Lorre role is the one that I did. And it actually ended up being a fun role, although once I started acting, I said, okay, if I'm going to be in the show, I need somebody to help me with props and set dressing. And they never found anyone to help. So I was trying to change props while I was in costume. It was not a fun experience. Um, and the director still owes me $350. But that's a whole other story. Um, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and do the countdown on this piece. Uh, I think we did have a bid for it. Oh, I can't. I'm a cheater, so I can't see it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, and we are at a stop. I didn't do a super strong accent. Somebody just asked about my accent. Um, I can do dialects. I don't remember how I did that one. Uh, it was like a pseudo German, pseudo just weird accent. Um, I didn't. I I didn't really do Peter Lorre. I just did the the role. All right. See the stop. It came in. It looks like. Wait, need to refresh. Karen can clarify. It looks like it might be Evelyn Hill. Evelyn? Uh, with then that name, I think, is new to me. So for everyone, my email address is on the screen. So for anyone who did purchase from me, I would appreciate if you would send me your email, as we discussed at the beginning, uh, so that I can connect uh, everybody that is doing that. So yes, Evelyn for $11. Great buy. Thank you. Great. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you. Listen, I've got one more thing to sell, and it is an absolutely beautiful table runner. On a personal note, if I may, before we bring things to a close, uh, nothing serious, but my mother is having cataract surgery tomorrow, and of course it's not a big deal. You know, it's probably over in five minutes. But if you send one up there, would you send one up there for her just so that she uh, gets through that cataract surgery okay? And boy, once she gets that cataract surgery done, boy, she's going to be doing those crossword puzzles like nobody's business. Okay. I wanted to say that, and I appreciate you uh, letting me do so. Um, I would... <laughs> like to where am i here let's uh, we're gonna bring you back in a minute we're not done with you patrick no, i'm not going anywhere we are not finished with you but i would like to show you a table runner and i don't know if uh patsy is hanging around but this one is a stunner this is probably wow one of the most luxurious one i have been hoarding table runners and i have to tell you I've got more table runners than I had tables. Therefore, 
I will never live in a 20 room big old house. And that's quite all right. So things that I have had boxed up for a while, it's time to pass on and may they find new homes. I've had this for a while. The, me the measurements are 50 by 16. So 50 inches long. Yeah. Five zero. Uh, yes. Okay. By 16 inches uh, wide. So 16 inches here to here, 50 um, in this length. And we'll hold this up. We're going to start at $20 on it. It's in excellent condition. It, um, I washed it. There's no, first of all, everything stinks like nicotine. You know that. So I wash everything. Every, all the linens that I sell no longer have um, the old pipe tobacco. So we'll hold this one up so that you can see it. This one actually is very thick and it's on the back. It's got a luxurious blue velvet. Now there are some little on the, this is the back of it and I'm showing the back of it first. Um, I don't know, but whether that's probably candle wax or something. these aren't holes, but you know, after a hundred years, you said the back is blue. Is the front blue as well? Yeah, I'll show you the front. But whatever this is on the back, it looks like candle wax or something on the back of it. So that's what the back of it looks like. But that's not the part that you see. You see <laughs> this part here, and it is absolutely luxurious. So a big, beautiful table runner. Again, 50 inches long by 20 inches wide. And again, these are velvet, no stains, no rips, no candle wax here. Oh, I didn't tuck my shirt tail in, sorry. Um, and let's just take a look at the quality of it. This was purchased in a department store. Yeah. And this went on the back of an old sofa table, right? And a slag glass lamp sat on it or some nice bookends or a candy dish. And this could also go across a dining room table. In the center of a dining room table. Um, library tables were really not in fad in the 1920s. That's an old fashioned kind of a thing. So, uh, but the sofa tables that were all accustomed to seeing in that era what they were often used for. So beautiful velvet. You've got black and blue uh, and this uh, sort of gold, black and blue and gold. The edges are all finished beautifully, as you can see. And you said it was 50 inches long. Somebody's asking the size again. 50 yeah. inches long and... Yeah. Uh, 50 inches in length by 16 inches in width. So easily placed in the center of a dining room table on the back of a server. Uh, on your sofa table. Gorgeous. Or wherever you like to put it, even on a make nice big matchmaker, make me a match and make me a match. But it's such a beautiful piece. And um, so, so much a part of interior uh, decorating interior of what was in interiors in the 19, uh, really the turn of the century into the 19, uh, 20s, 20s. And then they became fussy and old fashioned and the little white doilies became the thing. We all know what a little white doily is. And then these sort of, you know, fell out of fashion. So we'll count it down. Um, I think if there are no questions on it, I will go ahead and count this last piece down for you. I don't see any questions. And so here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 
four, three, two, one. I'm not sure why. I was trying to get you to see the whole thing, but we've already called stop on it. It's thick too. It's really, oh my gosh, it's so thick and so luxurious. You're going to love it. It's time for it to go to a... You got some last minute battling coming in, so I'll be curious to see what Karen says. Time for it to go to a new home and... But um, I'll show you while we're waiting. I will actually show you. Uh, hopefully this doesn't all. Well, wait a minute. I better show you when I'm finished. I use these all. I use these types of things all over the house. I put them on the tops of bookcases. I have them on my sofa table. There's one on the radio up there. I use them all over the house and I change them out during different seasons. You know, and you can too. It's... um. It's blue. It might have a little bit of purple. That's more on the blue side. It's uh, Jan, Jan Marie. Is that H U N? Hold on for a second. Let's Jan Marie Brunette Hanyedi. Hun Jan Marie. I know you, Jan. Okay, I'll have to go back. No, it's a little too, I don't know why all of a sudden I'm having... She just commented again, yippee, so you can see her name there. Jan Marie Brunette Hunyady. Okay. Uh, let's bring, uh, you don't need to watch me struggle, struggling trying to see this, so I'll... Okay, good. So we've got it. Um, Patrick, are you back there? Have you got anything else? Jan Marie, thank you. No, I'm, I mean, I've got a few more things, but I think we've been on for two Yeah, minutes, it's... Um, so we can... Oh. We went 30 minutes long. Yeah, I was going to say, so we, like, your, your people, it's, it's past everybody's bedtime, so. Oh, well, we got 331, so everybody didn't go to bed yet. No, I appreciate everyone hanging out and appreciate yeah, uh, all the bids that we got. And I, and I always love seeing what Scott's got for sale. These are some fantastic items. Um, we started with just ephemera, and then out of just a sheer conversation, it turned into, let's do some linens. And you had some beautiful linens tonight, Scott. Like I was like, almost considering bidding on that last one. I'm like, eh, I'm not sure I don't need it, but I want it. Uh, <laughs> it was, that's I, a beautiful piece that Jan Marie picked up. It's it's you know, and I had uh, and I apologize because I cannot remember, but I had um, a dear customer wrote to me earlier, not customer, friend. I don't. That sounds horrible. Uh, but it went by so fast I couldn't see it. I picked up four little pink depression glass inserts and i knew somewhere out there a person bought them but the comments went by so fast i couldn't see she wrote to me somewhere today they fit she has the dish they fit perfectly into her depression dish and you know so getting up at four o'clock in the morning and driving an hour to a flea market yes it's what i do for a living now but uh, it's, it is a lot of fun. And I know Patrick, you enjoy it as well. When you find items and folks incorporate them into their interiors and it means something to them, it's a lot of fun to do. Absolutely. I mean, when I started doing this, it's my, my hope is yes, I get a little extra spending money and maybe this becomes something I do in retirement, but it's finding things, particularly if it's at a estate sale, garage sale, goodwill, whatever it is, trying to make sure it gets in the right hands of the right people. Because at some point I can't collect it all. And I mean, I'm very focused on place for everything, everything in its place. And I don't, I don't want to just own everything. But sometimes you find these pieces of particularly the ephemera. That's why I like doing that so much. Because all right, somebody's gonna see a set of Coca-Cola paper paper cups. Why would anyone want that? Somebody does because they've got a vignette. They've got their own little diner. They might even use them, you know, whatever the case that they've got that lifestyle and they just need that. And I want to put it in their right hands. And uh, so it's, it's fun. And it's just fun to see when I travel, I have a nine state territory for my job for pretty much uh, central Midwest, upper Midwest. I get to see like what, what's got started carrying through on the covered wagons, you know, what made the trips and where did things get dropped off along the way? And yeah, some people are focused on 
Tupperware and things like that. That's not my thing. I want the old stuff and I'd love to see what survived and what can survive for years to come. Well, we'll keep doing it. And I think maybe Patrick, we should look at our calendars and figure out how we could possibly do a, um, I don't know. Maybe we could do it once a month um, or every so many I don't have to schedule. Don't you know, You're a busy guy. I would love, I would love, I love the sale that you do with Dave. So yeah, I'm, I'm horning on that. Um, anything. Always, always, always happy to spend time with you. So well, I want to thank everyone tonight. Thanks for joining me, Patrick. And thank you uh, for everyone who was helping out in the chat for everyone who was chatting. And you know, We've got folks that are relaxing on that old velveteen sofa right now. You didn't do any chatting. You didn't buy anything, but you just had a good time. And you mean, you mean as much to us, and I mean this, as, you know, people who buy stuff or people who chat. Don't think that we don't know that you're there because, you know, you got maybe 30 people chatting, but you know you got 350 some people out there. So, you you know i wish i knew your names i wish i could see you on the street but you're watching and we appreciate it yeah and i appreciate and i do appreciate the people who did comment i love when i see they you learned something you know i love hearing that and also i know scott's not as strong on social media um i do have an instagram channel i love when i sell somebody i love when they send me a picture like hey this is how i ended up using it or this is the i put it in a vignette or here's how it matched my living room or whatever I, we love that kind of stuff because it's not, I, and I can say this for Scott as well. This is not about just making the money. Yes, we make money. And in Scott's case, now it has to, lives off that money, but that's not why we do it. We love the stuff. We love finding somebody else who loves it as much as we do. And is going to give it a good home. I live in opulent poverty and I'm perfectly happy. <laughs> love that term. <laughs> Someone's asking me about candlesticks. Now, I don't know what, what are you talking about? What kind of candlesticks? What candlesticks? I don't think I saw that. I uh, it went by so it went by so quickly, so I'm not sure. Um, hey, listen, you did know you that no, you didn't have any tonight. Did you? You said you went live earlier today. Did you talk about him during that? I didn't, but um, we'll come back to it. But listen, hey, um, oh, excuse me, not hey, hey is for horses. Aren't you glad you're a cow? Mm -hmm. Um, remember yeah. that? You're not supposed to say hey. Now I don't remember what I was going to say. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll, 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 we'll say toodle oodles, whatever. Um, oh, did you mail them? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. And yeah. Uh, the, probably the candlesticks with the hands on the hips, the, the Cambridge. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They should, uh, if they didn't get there today, they'll be there tomorrow. Yeah. And I've got some other things that went out in the mail. I took, I took things to UPS on Saturday, but no trucks were coming until um, Monday. So they're out there. Okay. And yes, KP, give a reminder. Best wishes to your mom. Give her my best. Hope uh, I thank well, you. Well for her. Okay. Well, that's it. Great. Thanks thank again. Thanks, thanks everyone for joining us. Everyone have a great evening, whatever part of the evening you're in. And uh, we will all talk to you soon. Okay. okay. Let Hi, everybody. Me. Now, don't you go anywhere, Patrick. Let's chat for a minute, but we're going to draw this to. Okay, good night, all. Thank, thank you, everyone.